This audio presentation of the Council of Seven Lights by George Van Tassel is brought to you by AudioEnlightenment.com. Copyright 2014. All rights reserved. Introduction. Parapsychology has proven that the transmission and reception of thought is possible on a scientific fact. The information in this book is the result of a developed ability to awaken the nearly dormant consciousness to thoughts existing throughout time. Nothing can be thought of that has not been thought of before. The principles of radio, television, electricity, flying, and all modern things existed in the time of Plato and Columbus. All the principles of everything that can ever be already existed in the infinity of universal mind. The ability to penetrate mind requires practice. In practicing the act of awareness, I found that the intelligence exists throughout the universe. My first contact with the organized intelligences of other places revealed that the intelligence manifested on the earth is in the kindergarten stages. My penetration into the superconscious mind revealed an eternal record of infinite law. Thinking is not something one does. Thinking is the act of becoming aware of what already exists. One does not try to think to become aware. One only has to remove his own thoughts, and then the universal mind rushes in to fill the void. The introduction of any new thought is usually accepted by those who understand its potentialities and rejected by those who do not comprehend its portent. This often leads to controversy, which is the needed stimulant that brings individuals to the use of their own thought power. This book is not written with the intention to present anything radically new to the reader. It is written to revive that which has already become nearly dormant within his individual power of conception. One would be utterly foolish to try to explain a subject using scientific explanation to another who is not interested in and doesn't understand scientific terms. It would be equally unimpressive to appeal to one from the religious viewpoint if he were not interested in religion. My desire in presenting this book is to pass on that which makes sense to my reasoning faculties in the hope that others can gain something of lasting value from it. The materialism of the present society of the masses is evidence that even the most unreligious of individuals has a desire to worship something, so he worships matter. The materialists think they are the more advanced people in an otherwise scientifically ignorant society. The most devout religionists lean the other way and believe their heavenly point of view is the correct way. Actually, both are wrong and both are right from a neutral point of view. I am attempting to present this book from a middle viewpoint. If it appears that I am leaning one way or the other, the reader may take into account that perhaps he is basing his opinion on his own tendency to lean one way or the other. Now, the best way to really understand anything is to examine your own opinion from the opposite point of view. This book is an attempt to present to science and religion the facts that each are integral parts of the other, and both are the same one from opposite concepts. A wall is a wall regardless of which side which looks at it. On one side of this wall is written the history and achievement of science, and on the other side one can read the records of the various religions. There is only the one principle of creation, but there are many roads to finding this grand principle. Religion presents its many roads to the people, each sect presenting its approach as the only one, with the fanatic condemnation of all of the religious roads. The many divisions of science each profess their finding as the eternal verities. Religion presents God as the infinite being, and science presents the manifestation of God, which have been recorded with the five senses. In the unthinkable vastness of the infinite universe, the earth is only a teeny speck of matter inhabited by parasites called humans. The people depend upon the earth for their sustenance, the same as any parasite depends upon its host for life. Religion is the art of living now. A true religionist knows how to live without infringing upon the rightful living of others. The professors of religion prof propound spirit as something you become after your death. Actually, the spirit of you is here now, and your God is determined by the way you live in the flesh body so as to manifest spirit here now on earth. The consciousness of every individual contains all of the records of every act and personality that the individual has ever done or been. To admit that many of the thoughts I received were given by other identities would be true, yet the further truth is that I have been all of these other identities. Reincarnation is a misnomer. All that one has ever been or ever will be, he is now. Everyone has always existed since the creation. 
Whether one accepts the limits of one lifespan here on earth, or this life, or on a hereafter somewhere else is of no concern. One cannot honestly believe in a hereafter without believing in a before. This schoolroom on the earth is only a brief experience in eternal life. One must first understand himself, then he may understand his fellow man. If this is accomplished, then one is at the doorway of understanding God. The Council of Seven Lights O man, you have made laws to avoid using my laws. Confusion, chaos, and war are the result of man's ideas, opinion, and assumption. Light alone is the essence of truth. Truth alone is the essence of wisdom. Wisdom is the essence of knowledge. Knowledge is the essence of life. Only through knowledge can man express wisdom in action. I have given man life that he might demonstrate my knowledge through action and wisdom. I extend the concentration of my light to those who are demonstrating my laws. O man, in living my life, in breathing my breath, establish within yourself the solidarity, the contentment, the bliss of living rightly, that I may know, that I may feel the glorious pulsation of the being of you. In speaking my words, let they ring clear, let them be dear and near to you that others may understand. Realize, I am not the expression of self. I am only the boundless, unselfish utterance of the heart and the soul that sees me and others. None can bring about the working of my laws unless first they have established their right within my light. Reach not for golden prizes of desire, for they shall reflect the light. Look not into the mirrors of space, for eyes at the sea are blind to me. And though the prize be golden, my light does not reflect. Express the being of me in life. Extend me in the action that I may feel the thrill of doing for another whose need is great, that I may know success in manifesting you to bring about the me and others, that their eyes may see through thee to me. Not reflection, not illusion, but the purity, the reality I have instilled within the you of me. Chapter 1. The Missing Link In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1.1. This creation was a part of the continuously evolving creation throughout the universe. Each instant that passes, new things are being made, new phases of life unfold to live in ever-progressing cycles of rebirth. As related above, God made heaven before earth. In these heavens of the sky, he had already created man. On many planets in many other solar systems and other planets in this solar system, man was developed through thousands of years even before the earth was habitable. Man was created, Genesis 1.27, he did not evolve from the lower animals. However, he was not created on the earth. Man was created throughout millions of solar systems to serve as the instrument of God's doing. Anyone who contends that this planet is the only one occupied by intelligent life form does not accept God in his infinite completeness. His narrow mind has placed a limit on his ability to perform his creation. Adam was not a single man. The Adamic race of man was the first people to inhabit the earth. This is confirmed in Genesis 1.27, where the race of man in the original creation is described as male and female. In Genesis 1.28, the scripture relates how God blessed them, this is plural, not him, but them. And God said unto them, the Adamic race, both male and female, be fruitful and multiply. This all happens before Eve is ever mentioned. Thus the Adamic race is established on earth. Then God finished his work of creation in regard to man. He had also finished the creation of the heavens and the earth, Genesis 2.1, and all the host of them. This means all the beings who occupied the earth and the heavens. So God ended his work and rested. Genesis 2, 2 and 3. Can this be that God ended his work and still no mention of Eve? Yes, the Bible is accurate on God's beginning of his creation. Then comes the summary of the creation. This is where people are led into confusion. For the first time, God is left out of the picture, and we have a Lord God, Hebrew Jehovah or Elohim. This character was one of the Adamic race who was in the colony that had been landed here by spacecraft. The men of the Adamic race did not bring their women with them when they first landed on earth. 
The Lord God brings Eve into the picture, not the Creator. The Lord God said that the Adamic men were lonesome. Genesis 2.18 Then the Lord God pops Eve out of the rib after one of their people fell into a deep sleep. Genesis 2.21-22 God brings about the creation of people through birth everywhere in the universe, not by making women out of men's ribs. The race of Eve was the highest form of lower animal life on this planet. They were not apes, but they were also not the race of man created by God. Next comes the story of Adam, Eve, and the apple, Genesis 3, 1-7. The son of the Adamic race of man blamed the woman, and the woman blamed the serpent. The poor serpent didn't have anyone to blame. One of the true species of man, as God created the Adamic race, mated with an animal. There is no violation of God's law in man mating with woman after his own kind. Adam's violation of the law was not in eating the apple. It was in eating the wrong apple. God created every creature after its own kind. Genesis 1, 11, 12, and 21, 22. But one of the race of man mated with an animal of the earth and crossed blood. This is where man became human, H-U slash M-A-N. Eve gave birth to Cain and Abel. She didn't know who the Creator was, so she said, I have gotten a man from the Lord, Genesis 4.1, thinking the Lord was the Adamic man who was her mate. When Cain killed Abel, he revealed the animal nature of his mother. He started the practice of murder that has expanded to a point now where people can vaporize thousands of others with atomic and hydrogen bombs. That is why the people of the earth are called humans. The Adamic sons of God knew the tiger as a killer among beasts. The name for tiger was Hugh, H-U. Most of the people on the earth are crossbreed descendants of the true Adamic sons of God, as originally created, and the animal race of Eve. That is why you have an earthly, dense animal body, and an inner body of created reality as God made you. The truly created men and women of the Adamic race of man have been watching the people on the earth for thousands of years. This civilization from Shiva, Hindu god of destruction of humans, has expanded the science and destruction to the point of crisis. The nations having atomic bombs have enough to wipe out all living things on the earth. The animal of Eve is in power. The Adamic race of man has brought nullifier ships into the Earth's thin film of breathable atmosphere. We call them green fireballs. They have nullified concentrations of atomic radiation that were in the atmosphere. They feel responsible for the fact that one of their people started this destructive cycle on Earth. You have a choice to make. You either accept the Creator's Adamic constructive part of you, or you recognize the physical human's destructive influence of the Eve ancestry. The Adamic race of man typifies the combination of spirit and substance into form. The many forms of life, fish, bird, reptile, insect, animals, and humans, all change with environment and breeding. The human race is a degenerative species of man as a result of following the bestial tendencies. Matter and spirit are the same thing only in the opposite manifestation. Matter is energy or spirit condensed, and energy is matter in solution. Each is polarized throughout infinite space and both follow a pattern of forms. Space is the infinite ocean of intelligence, creative spirit, or the creator at rest. This balanced intelligence manifests through all creation. In order to manifest motion, the energies must be unbalanced. No thing or condition in God's universe is without contrast and duality. For every up there is a down, for every white there is a black, for every night there is a day. Anyone who has climbed the tree of knowledge can see that it has two sides, no matter in which direction one looks. This is not because the tree knows one side from another. It's because the man in the top of it has two sides, his right and his left. God made everything in duality, so he could remain at rest in the middle. God is peace. Jesus said, My Father and I are one. That was because he recognized no rich or poor, no boundaries or colors, no church or religions. That was because he remained neutral and a dividing point between the contrasting dualities. Jesus didn't take sides with anyone. Actually, you shouldn't take either side. Take God's course down the middle. 
A fire can warm or destroy you. Cold is desirable in a refrigerator, but not when it makes one uncomfortable. Speed is required to get somewhere fast, but the momentum can kill you if you lose control of it. Atomic energy is a death force. Its radiation can kill you without a bomb being dropped. In commercial use for power, it is as deadly as when it is used in a bomb. Fission or fusion of atoms or their isotopes on a planet are not as God intended. God created suns to operate their reactions by the principle of fission and fusion. He also placed the planets far enough away from the sun so there would be no harmful effects from their waste products. Human use of sun principles on a planet is in direct opposition to the creative principle of an all-wise God. The law of reaction will cancel every destructive cause, apply sun principles on planets, and the reaction will make the planet a sun. Who escapes? Only the people who are with God in the middle. How? They will be taken out into space by the race of man in the spacecraft. In order to present the one principle which causes all things to be, let us use the symbol G to signify what is commonly referred to as God. Let us use A to symbolize the right hand of God or the positive polarity projective male force of unbalanced energy. Let us use B as a sign of negative polarity, receptive female energy, or the left hand of God. Assume that God, who rested after the creation of all things, is the still fulcrum of intelligence throughout all infinity that serves as the balance between these opposites. For an objective point of view, assume that the G line is vertical to the plane of this paper. Assume that the A line is on the paper running crosswise at 90 degrees to the vertical G line. This A line of force is composed of positively charged particles. Assume that the B line is running from the top to the bottom of the paper at 90 degrees to the A line and 90 degrees to the G line. This B line of force is composed of negatively charged particles. Where these lines cross, there is an atom, a micro solar system, created in perfection by those unseen forces. The atomic element is determined by the substance present in the changed A and B lines. This evolves a nucleus of positively charged particles called a proton, surrounded by a field of negative orbits set up by the B particles in motion. The concentrated group of B particles in this orbit we will call an electron. The G line has no motion as to movement in a given direction. It extends infinitely throughout all space, through all substance and materials. It exists in what we term both light and darkness. These lines are parallel to each other. Atoms compose all things. G. Light is found in the composition of all atoms. G. Light is creative intelligence. Our Earth is an electron of the Sun, traveling in its orbit of a negative field. It is rotated by the bandwidth of A and B light forces equal to the Earth's diameter. Prior to the formation of individual atoms, the A and B lines of light force had to contain the correct amount of substance particles. For clarification, let us revert down to a single line of A and B lines of force. These two lines of oppositely charged light cross each other at 90 degrees, insulated by the G line of infinite intelligence. They cannot be brought into induction where they cross unless they are mated. In order to give birth to an atom of hydrogen, the A and B lines must conform to species. The law reads, each after its own kind, the B must contain the same number of particles per inch as the A does. These particles must also vibrate at the same frequency. In order to become hydrogen, both lines of light must conform to the vibratory frequency of hydrogen in the spectrum. The vibratory frequency of each element is different. The hydrogen particles of vibrating in their own frequency in the light lines before they become an atom cannot mix with the frequency of any other element. This makes them of like species in every respect, except they are of opposite polarity. This opposition of charge brings them together, and the G light allows them to mate by induction because they are equal opposites. The density of each element is determined by the frequency of the vibrating particle in both the A and the B lines of force. Each atomic element is the result of perfect proportion, charge and vibration in equal and opposite polarities, Thus, an atom of hydrogen is the same wherever it is found in the universe. Let us proceed to simplify the complex. Picture an onion cut in two. 
An onion is like an atom, the outside layer or shell being the negative field of orbit for the outermost electron. The next layer and each alternate layer toward the center being composed of intelligence, the insulating layer of infinite light force called the G line of light. When you crack an atom, the force disturbing or puncturing the outer shell creates unbalance and neutralizes the outer shell. This causes the outermost electron to be attracted to the positive proton in the center. However, before the electron reaches the proton, the instantaneous inrush of G light force through the fractured outer shell creates implosive pressure within the atom. This is the active force that brings about the explosion when the electron and proton discharge within the ruptured shell. The insulating G light condenses into what science has named a neutrino. This potent causation force immediately deserts its wrecked atom and takes off to return to the 13th density. This is what the religion would term a resurrection, when the potent, causal, infinite light force deserts its shell or body. God, in his infinite wisdom, called all, caused all of his creations to function by perpetual motion. He maintains the balance by centering each creation and insulating each one from all others. When he created the A-line of light force, he caused them to be 1,850 of them to a square centimeter. He gave them positive polarity, male, projective gender, a speed of 186,000 miles per second, and matter in the form of charged particles. In the opposition to the A-lines of light force, he created the B-line. The B-line are 1,257 per square centimeter. They cross between the A-lines of force at 90 degrees with a speed of 202,000 miles per second. Their polarity is negative. Their gender is female receptive. Between the breathing of these two primary forces, he created rhythm. This brings about a wave motion which consolidates the individual lines into bands. When A works inward, B works forward. And when A works outward, B works backward. Rhythm, which establishes the bands, level, and density changes, is operated by strain or desire. Strain is the time between the flight of the female, negative lines of force, and the pursuit of the male, positive line of force. When they encounter any created object that was born before by other A and B lines of light, they add to its rotation by spiral induction and partial penetration. The negative B lines are attracted to the Earth's positive core, but are resisted by the G light insulation strata. Having penetrated the negative crust, they are repelled by it and take the line of least resistance, which is out of the North Pole. By induction, they attracted the positive core to rotate in one direction, and in being repelled, help the negative crust to rotate in the opposite direction. The A, positive line of force, work opposite to the foregoing and are emitted at the South Pole. As they emit from the poles, they are met by the A and B lines of light that are passing uninterrupted by the planet and bent back to their original course. The resistance in bending causes the aurora. As they have reduced their energy charge and speed of motion in adding power to the planet, they enter different levels as they emerge from the poles. Then the G lines of light crossing between them and insulating them brings them back through rest and rhythmic breathing to their original condition. The A lines of the force have more quantity, density, and less speed than the B lines of force. The B lines have more speed and less density. This is the reason why the A positive lines of force charged with matter become the proton core of the earth. The faster B-charged matter becomes the crust of our planet. This strain or desire is the eternal progressive spirit in all things that manifest action. Strain in people is called desire. When the desire exceeds the limits of capacity, the Father's agents of balance, the A and B lines of force, will bring about an opposite result. The G, A and B lines, are the us referred to in the Bible, Genesis 1.26, when God said, Let us make man. The Council of Seven Lights O mortals, though my laws have been as doormats beneath your feet, though through centuries you have turned not to face the light, I judge not, neither do I hold regret, for all are given right to choose. 
mortals in this density of three, having not chosen me, now stand beneath the whip, but are rather facing rebound of the action man has created. My laws are fixed. None can change the law of all infinity. One fulfills the law, or faces judgment by the law, written in the light of each of my created beings. Having turned my laws about, now you are faced with your man creation in opposition to my laws. So I gather up the scattered fruit, knowing that the bulk of my harvest has been lost to repetition upon repetition of error, written into the history of mortals on this portion of me. I must brush off this contamination from my cloak, that I may hang it in my closet clean. Those who have failed for centuries to recognize my person within their being are forced by their actions to repetition once again. My heart, manifested by you, is sore, but I shall recover to bring about the destiny as many times as necessary that my pattern shall be complete for each one of my parts. So it is again and again I cleanse my house. My love shall never fail. Everlasting light is man's by choice alone, and the choice I gave to him. I am the voice that manifests in every word you say. I am the sound in darkness to your ear that leads the way. You stumble on the path to me. You fail to see the light within that grows with every victory over self. To be a part of me, project the actions of me being you. Extend my love instilled within. Do unto others as I do to you. For I can only be through you. Chapter 2 Invisible Gears Densities are the levels or grades through which creation progresses. Thought is the activating force. Thought is the image of the creative intelligence. Progression is a reward for effort expended in creative thought. Through thought, the Creator established a pattern through which all things must pass. The people of the Earth and the solar system are all in the same boat at present. There are various levels or decks in this space boat. There are visible partitions between these different levels. The first class passengers in this solar boat are not the wealthy people nor the intellectuals of the system. The steerage is not occupied by the poor or the illiterate. Everything in this boat is mixed up. The Creator didn't make it this way. The mix-up is due to the doing of man. Earth people are dominated by individual and mass ego. Nearly everyone thinks he is better than others. Now, progression is upward, and when one looks down on another, he must lower himself to see the other. When one sees the good in others, he automatically raises himself. The Creator established densities to control these conditions the third density, where these things exist in the triangle of confusion, is about all finished. Humans on earth are going to have to conform to the requirements of the fourth density, or take this grade over again. The requirement to pass is to live the golden rule, not to profess it or expect others to live it, but to live it individually, as you are only responsible for yourself. The drawing represents one of the flowers of the universe. The Velas sector system is only one of the Creator's thoughts. There are twelve densities in the system we occupy. Each of these is divided into twelve major cycles. Each major cycle is divided into twelve minor cycles. When a solar system moves out of one density into another, it is called a master cycle. The solar system that we are now in is in the arc between the third and fourth densities. For the planet Earth and the solar system, this is the time of times. The Earth is culminating a minor cycle, a major cycle, and a master cycle all at the same time. This will bring about a rebalancing of the planet on new poles. When this occurs, the great earthquake written of in Revelation will take place. The first density for the Earth was when the planet only supported vegetation. The Earth's rotational speed was such that only gigantic vegetation with a germination temperature of about 110 degrees Fahrenheit could survive. When the Earth passed through the arc, or overlap, between the first and second densities, it rebalanced on new poles, and the mass of vegetation became our coal beds of today. As soon as the Earth had stabilized in the second density, the space people landed animals on the planet. This has been handed down from the ancient records as the story of Noah and the Ark. The germination temperature in the second density was 140 degrees. The animals that lived in the second density were also very large. 
They were of the mastodon and dinosaur type. The reason they became extinct when the planet passed from the second into the third density was because the germination temperature in the third density was around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Many of the carcasses of these large animals are recovered today from the glacier of Siberia. That area was tropical in the second density. In the arc of space, where the Earth rebalanced on new poles, the animal with a germination temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit could not reproduce in a temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. After the large animals became extinct, the space people of the Adamic Confederation landed a colony of the race of man on the Earth. It was through the mating of these Adamic men people with the race of Eve, upright walking animals of high second density development that survived the cataclysm in the Ark of Spay that brought about the humans on the earth. This was the beginning of human people in the third density on the earth. The race of Eve became extinct, except for the animal flesh contributions and destructive tendencies of humans. Humans cannot reproduce in the fourth density and will become extinct as an animal man emergence in the first hundred years as the fourth density. Germination temperature will be around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The humans that survive through the cataclysm of the coming polar flip will gradually die off. The fourth density is not for destructive principles or humans. Those who do not conform to the requirements to emerge will be reincarnated back into the twelfth phase of the third density of another planet and have to live through this mess again. The densities alternate polarity and therefore rotation. The drawing shows them as viewed from the top looking at their maximum circumference. An edgewise view would show them as spirals, one with the apex up and next with the apex down. Our solar system is about to pass out of the maximum circumference of the third density into the minimum circumference of the fourth density. The Earth will then rotate nearly 370 days in a year. Do not confuse densities with dimensions. Densities are pressures established in changing frequencies of vibration. Dimensions are measurements. Some have mixed up dimensions and density. Time is not measurable in the absolute. Time can be phased in density and moved backward or forward. However, it can only be done through the zero point between polarities. As our solar system moves through space, its progression is into an ever-increasing frequency of vibration. Each solar system and every planet must evolve through grades, even as babies learn to crawl before they walk. The A and B lines of force pass through your body at 90 degrees to each other. The G line of infinite light centers your consciousness and separates you from all other people with a boundary of skin. As these positive and negative lines of energy pass through your body, they activate every atom and cell of your physical makeup. If the approach of these lines to this planet from out of space is, is interrupted by one of the other planets as they are, then you individually are affected by the influence from the other planets. Our scientists say the moon causes tides, yet they contend that the moon has no effect on crops, people, or other conditions, that these beliefs are only superstition. The human body is over two-thirds water. Is it superstition to assume that if the influence of the moon moves thousands of millions of tons of water in the oceans, that the hundred pounds or so of water in the person is not also affected? Everything has some effect on everything else in the universe. As you move throughout the day in an upright position, you are moving in and out of many lines of force. All of them are charged with influences, not only of other planets, but from other people, various metallic objects, electronic devices, and atmospheric conditions. You feel these influences, and you may wonder how the day or year went so fast. At another time, the hours may drag. This time, changes are the result of some influence acting upon you. If you work hard or run, you become heated and tired. This is the result of an increase in the number of charged lines of forces that you have interrupted. Through various attitudes caused by turning, bending, and motion of the limbs, heat is generated in the body because of constant changes of the angle of attack from the lines of force. When you sit down to rest for a few minutes, this permits the body to absorb the energy from the A and B lines of force issuing forth from the same unchanging direction. Then the structure of the body cools off because it reaches balance. This idling condition of the body motor is brought about by the fact that each atom is receiving steady motion by the same line of force. 
When you sleep at night, the body becomes charged in balanced rhythmic interchange. There has been much said of one sleeping with his head to the north or east or in a particular direction. This is not a fixed law. It varies with each individual. Each person should try the various directions, with some people require that they vary direction occasionally. It is more important to sleep away from metallic objects. Coil springs are especially detrimental to complete rest. Metallic conductors set up vortices that cause a circular motion within the straight lines of force. This is a parallelism to the body activity, so instead of resting, your body is working even while you sleep. The essence of life is the same in all densities or dimensions. Life is manifested from the A and B lines of light force by the infinite G light. Life is only given form in the first density by the principle of the wheel of life. All vegetation, all substance with form, such as rocks, fluids, and planets, maintain form through various times, stages, or cycles. Each form of life in the first density contributes substance to every other form of life of all material or negative levels. All densities of life contribute to the progression of every form of life in densities beneath them. All forms of substance are alive in repetitive patterns for their particular species. Thus substance through life repeats its cycles from dust to dust. Life is the carrier of progression in its external and endless spiral. Thus the stages are positive or negative or both when they are in balance. The spiral of life, also called caduceus, is symbolized by two serpents. The negative, receptive, or female is only given desire by its opposite, the positive, projective, or male counterpart, and vice versa. These symbols are not zigzag in form, they are spiral. They are centered and separated by the staff of life, around which they twine ever upward through the infinite intelligence. The first density on earth, consisting mainly of vegetation, is of both polarities. The dividing line is the surface of the earth. The positive, projective part of the planet is attracted into the dark negative soil to provide minerals and moisture so the receptive, female portion above the surface may bloom in her fullness. This is the reason why a water witcher's twig, taken from a living plant, can indicate water. It is actually a living instrument. Like magnets, when they are cut, the positive end remains in the same direction. Therefore, they are held upside down in order to function. As all things beneath the surface of the soil are of negative polarity, and since survival is the strongest desire, the twig wants to assume its negative natural polarity position and is attracted positive and but first to the water of life. For the same reason, when you spend long periods of time in the positive sun, you require more water, which is negative, to quench your thirst, which is the result of unbalanced light force. Every cell in the vegetation is life in form, maintaining a still greater life in form. As an animal eats the first density, or the stationary life form, vegetation, it gives to it motion. The substance confined to the place where the seed dropped can now move around, as it has been assimilated by and raised to the second density, life in motion. The same progression of substance takes place when you eat the flesh of an animal. Humans, being both animal and spirit, are of the third density, life, motion, and consciousness. You, as part of the eternal pattern of life and form, give to the animal substance the ability to express and recognize the spirit. Although all forms of life progress within their own densities, much confusion has been started by the theorists who try to tie the densities together. Darwin tried to show the evolution of man from the apes. There is no missing link except breeding. As our solar system has progressed through space, it crossed on August 20th, 1953, from the third density to the fourth density. Our planet has emerged from the frequency of the third density. Everything on this planet must now begin to conform to this higher frequency pattern. We are on the verge of witnessing a cyclic planetary house cleaning. All things in the solar system are going to be brought into balance. The space people of the Adamic race, serving as agents of God, have through the centuries followed a pattern of cycles in bringing their qualified teachers to the people of Earth. Approximately every 2100 years, the spacecraft of the space people have landed one of their divine mothers on Earth to give birth to the true Son of God, 
As far as the records go, they have all been virgin mothers. These cycles are determined by the Adamic people according to the cosmic planetary time. A minor cycle is approximately 2100 years, or one-twelfth of a major cycle. A major cycle is about 26,000 years, or a complete cycle of the precision of the equinox. These cycles vary in time either way, plus or minus, according to nutation. During the last major cycle, the space people landed twelve teachers. The teacher called Jesus was the twelfth and last of the sons of God in the past major cycle. The policy is always to return the last teacher of each major cycle to begin the next cycle. The importance of today is emphasized by the fact that we are not only on the pinnacle of a minor cycle, but also amidst a major and a master cycle at the same time. This brings about a balancing of the planetary forces that the space people call the Father's house cleaning among his planets. However, in the Bible it is called the time of the great earthquake. Noah walked with God because he was one of the space people who came to the earth in the Ark of Noah, N-O-E. In the Bible, Noah is confused with No. Noah was a man, and No, N-O-E, was the Ark of No. It was the Ark of No that the animals were brought to earth. The space people landed the various animals that could survive in the second density germination temperature. Of course, there was a flood during the time of the Ark of No. The Bible is correct when it said all the water was in the firmament in the first density. That was why the vegetation was so thick in the first density. The moisture would condense and water in vegetation at night and rise as fog in the daytime. When the earth flipped on its poles in the arc of No, the rotational speed changed and the new temperature of the earth being less, the waters condensed and fell from the atmosphere and flooded the land. The Bible said the waters were 15 cubits deep, about 27 feet in Genesis 7.20. So the story in the Bible of the ark and its animal cargo is a badly twisted version of man and a boat. The size of the biblical ark is given as 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high, about 525 feet by 88 feet by 53 feet high. Imagine caging a pair of each kind of living thing in an area that large, and don't forget they needed sufficient food carried to feed them for about 40 days. Then the story gets further off. They confuse the accurate ancient records with another ark. This is when the Bible puts Noah's sons in the same boat. The animals were landed in the ark of Noah between the first and second densities. 312,000 years later, Ham, Shem, and Japheth were landed on earth between the second and third densities in the ark of Spay, S-P-A-E. Noah's sons were not individuals either. The race of Ham were the black people, the race of Shem were white people, and the race of Japheth were the yellow people. The various tribes that descended from these three original colors of people that were colonized on earth by the space people is listed in Genesis chapter 10. Each race is pure in its own color, and the universal law reads, each seed after its own kind. In all the creation on the earth, each flower, tree, animal, and all of nature follows this law, except humans who are given the right to choose. Humans were given the intelligence to raise themselves, yet humans are the only creature that violates this law. O man, though I am one, I am also many. Though I center the individual light of each of you, you also are the one of me. I live each sensation, I live each expression, I am the motion of thee, O man. Consider each thing you do, you do to me. For when you strike one of my parts, I feel the blow, and when you cast a thought of love, I absorb the love of you, and I return it to you. When idle mind leads thee to tear the reputation of another down, you have only lowered your thought of me, and in turn have lowered yourself. Realize that I am always with you, always the silent, unseen companion in your every action, the recipient of your every thought. I love to express myself through you in ways that bring me joy, in paths that reach the heart in gratitude. Help me to express the oneness of each of us, that I may center all my parts in unity of me, in thee in harmony and love. 
that none shall know the pain and sorrow and heartbreak you did express yourself. I gave thee light of life that you might extend my action, that others might feel the joy of me that are in darkness bent, who are trouble-blinded and cannot see that I am there. Extend the progress I have brought into being by lifting up another, that I may feel a twofold expression expressed in grateful thanks. Though I am stillness, my parts all move in me. My rest is in contrast, or motion could not be. Extremes establish the boundaries between which man cannot go. Though I am boundless, man is bound in being of me by individuality. Man I have created, so I may extend myself through motions of the part of me, so I will not be bound within the stillness of my infinity. Chapter 3. The Sons of God. S-U-N-S. The sun has evolved planet in its progressive state of becoming space. An expanding universe must have something to expand from. The sun is not becoming smaller by combustion, fission, or fusion. It is growing larger by digestion of the matter it encounters in the lines of primary light energy. The sun gives off only a very small percentage of the energy it is not acquiring. Matter or mass cannot give off but only a small percentage of its actual total potential energy, even in the famed atomic bomb. The energy given off by any fuel or matter is always less than the substance which went into its making. Why is this? The answer is because mind also went into the making of all created things. Mind is neutral. Mind cannot give off energy. It can only direct the flow and action of energy. Universal mind permeates all things. Each person uses the mind of God according to his or her ability to get into it deeper. All things that are or ever will be already exist in universal mind. None can penetrate into the universal mind beyond their own acquired capability. On the other hand, God cannot do more for you than you are capable of doing for yourself by directing the universal mind. When scientists discover that the core of the proton in an atom is square, they will realize that the body in the sun is also square. The cubic minerals in their crystallized state are of neutral polarity on a negative surface such as the earth. They can be brought into polarity, however, by the exposure to light, pressure, or charging. The body of the sun was brought into cubic form by the fact that its axes were parallel to the three lines of light energy. The infinite light, or universal mind, or the G line of light centers one axis. The positive A and the negative A lines center the other two axes. They are all at 90 degree angles to each other. The sunspots are discharges of secondary magnetic electrostatic force released into the atmosphere and photosphere by the rotating corners of the square core body. These discharges are magnetic exhaust effects common to any body in motion. The sunspots are apparent in the 10 degree to 30 degree north and south latitudes on the sun to our vision. The sunspots are exhausted when the discharged polarized matter is neutralized in the photosphere or the actosphere. They appear black to earth telescopes because they hide the effect of fusion taking place between the positive photosphere and the negative actosphere. The positive photosphere to the positive sun body is the equivalent of the negative atmosphere to the negative earth body. They each carry the same polarity as the body which they surround. The fact that the rotational period of the sun appears to be of different speeds at different latitudes is due to the spiral effect of primary light energy losing speed in its travel to the pole. The apparent 10-day differential in rotation between the equator of the sun and its poles is only observed in the force field of the actosphere. Viewed from the point of any of the three axes, a cube will appear square around its perimeter. Many square, positive bodies in space do not rotate because their axes remain parallel to the lines of primary light. The bodies that do rotate were placed in motion when their axes were thrown out of parallel with the lines of light by a bend or warp in the lines of primary energy. This caused the positive square body to start rotating by unbalanced polarity opposition within itself. The polar axis of the sun is now through two opposite corners of the cubic sun body. 
the cube remaining motionless in the lines of primary energy, like a compass needle, as long as it were in polarity balance. Once the body was in motion, the lines of force trying to reach rest spiraled to the two points of least motion. This established an equator and opposite poles at two opposite corners. In this position, the positive polarity half and the negative polarity half of the sun each has three corners discharging at approximately 20 degrees each side of the equator. These rotating corners are displacing matter and discharging energy. This is what causes the sunspot. Cut an art gum eraser or a piece of soap into cube and insert common pins into two opposite corners. Then make a line around the cube midway between the pole points or pins. Assume one half of the cube will have four corners in it and one polarity. Then if you look at the opposite corners you will find that they are all on the other side of the equator line. You will also see that each half from the equator line is a three-sided pyramid or prism. The polarized prismic structure of the rotating sun generates secondary light in its positive photosphere. The negative actosphere, which we see as a ball of fire, is activated in opposition to the photosphere by the primary lines of light energy. Space is the cubes of matter that are stable because their three axes are parallel to the three lines of light. Motion is only manifested by unbalanced matter, whether it be sun, planet, atom, or person. Desire for rest is what causes the intelligence in matter in motion to seek balance and become again part of the infinite intelligence, which is still. Space is composed of balanced cubes of intelligence at rest. The lines of primary light energy parallel the eight edges and two axes of the cubes of space in two directions, and the infinite light parallels the four remaining edges in one axis. All unbalanced positive bodies are emitting light. All unbalanced negative bodies are absorbing light. Cubes are unbalanced positive bodies. Negative bodies are unbalanced spheres. Each can contain or be a part of the other as long as one polarity is predominant. The predominant polarity will determine whether the object is spherical or cubical in shape. Astronomers state that the light from some of the stars is coming from so many hundreds and thousands of light years away that the star could be burned out and the light would still be visible on the Earth. This is predicated on the idea that the light is still traveling after the emitting body is no longer there. Well, this is erroneous. If the stars were not still emitting the light and were not there, you could not see it. Telescopes and eyes do not see. They are only a system of lenses through which light passes. The mind sees. You can picture things you have experienced in the mind with your eyes closed. The same infinite light of intelligent mind centers every atom, star, planet, and manifested being. When astronomers look through a telescope or people observe without one, anything you can see is there. The instant, infinite light of a universal mind that centers you and what your mind sees cannot record or vision something that is not there. Negative physical vision only records to the negative physical brain the illusion that the sun is round. All that the limited physical vision is recording is the effect of the secondary light emissions from the force field and fusion around the sun. Physical negative vision can only see reflected positive light from another negative body or negative light reflected from another positive body. The actosphere being of negative polarity is spherical. Therefore the negative physical vision records it as a ball of fire. Were it not for the activation of the sun's actosphere by the positive and negative lines of primary light energy, you would not see the sun at all with physical vision. Though I scatter my seeds of light throughout my garden of space, I determine which shall grow to be a star and which shall represent my image. Though all my seeds are light of me, each brings about a pattern individual and destiny of my doing. Though in the scattering of my seeds some may fall on barren soil, the segregation is within the knowing which shall bear fruit. For in the essence of my wisdom I breathe not the breath of life that all my seeds shall grow at once. Rather do I select them that I may express myself each moment throughout eternal time. And though my seeds are pure and light in love of me, 
I know all shall not grow to bring about the fruit in perfection, for unto each seed I rendered individuality and right to choose. O man, O mortal man, my oneness I bring about in individuality that I may scatter my parts and express myself. Though all things I have created in balanced opposites, I remain the centering separate. Though I have made my gender two, though my polarity is divided, I test my strength on my right and my left. Though man has chosen to further separate my expressions of love, though man has chosen to divide the rounds to me, though man has brought self-interest into my expression, I shall maintain the balance, centering my interchange of power. If one should sit on my right hand in the love of me, I shall balance that love unto my left hand in equality. I cast out barriers to face the beings in you, that I may temper all my parts. Though I have given all alike from thoughts of me, many cannot reach the door that guides their destiny to path unfurled into light. And though they lose their way in darkness, seeking, I retrieve the whole and cast my mold again, never losing my sing any single portion. For I am soul of thee, O man, and light in darkness too. And though my light of light extends through all eternity, I back the light with darkness, that recognition may be yours. Energy and matter are opposite poles of the same thing. Matter can be converted into energy, but always with mass loss. Energy, in being converted to matter, will always register a gain. The fact that all celestial bodies are conversions to matter of energy in solution in space is evidenced by their different densities. Scientists have assumed that if a rocket could be propelled outside the Earth's gravity, it would coast on its momentum indefinitely. This is based on the assumption that space is void. If space were void, no system would hold its body relative to each other in their orbits. The time field of the Sun establishes a zero field of time relative to the planet's opposition of hemispherical polarities. The opposition of the Earth's polarities relative to the energy charge of its mass is what establishes its position in the solar system. A small planet can be of a greater density than a larger one. Its composition of the elements may be such, however, that its charge relative to its mass may be less. The time field of the Earth is at the magnetic equator. At the Earth's surface it is narrowed down to about the thickness of a razor blade. Surface land is of greater magnetic potential than the ocean. The Earth's magnetic equator, therefore, will be inclined to veer toward the major land masses. This wave in the magnetic equator stabilizes as it recedes from the surface. The angle of divergence is about 5 degrees of arc, making a V-shaped cross-section as it gains altitude from the surface. The area composing this V-shaped cross-section is the Earth's time field. If you could stay in this area a few thousand miles from the Earth's surface, time would cease to exist. Your body polarities would reach balance, and you would become pure mind and infinite in your scope of everything. It is the time field that separates polarities in their different speeds of apparent rotation. Relative to the Earth, the positive and negative lines of primary energy are working in opposition. The negative lines of force are causing the Earth to rotate, while the positive lines of force are trying to stop it from rotating. The speed of the Earth's rotation is the result of the differential between the speed of the positive lines of force and the speed of the negative lines of force relative to the charge of the Earth's mass. The positive and negative lines of force fill space with matter in solution. Being in solution, it must be termed energy, because it is not condensed by polarity predominance. The time field ends at the outer limit of the Earth's force field. If it were possible to alter the time field by changing it relative to the Earth's magnetic equator, we could direct the planet's course out of the solar system or cause it to assume another orbit elsewhere in the system. The spacecraft are controlled in their travel by oscillating the time field with thought force, causing the positive and negative fields to move the ship's mass relative to the direction of the lines of primary energy. Earth scientists do not understand negative electrical currents or fields. As the positive lines of force manifest results through conductors, the negative currents and fields can only be activated through non-conductors. 
The only true insulation that will separate the opposite polarities of field is time. The Earth's people only register time because the planet rotates in orbits. They assume that time goes by. Time is infinite, and all that people on the planet can register is the revolving planet passing through time. The people are in motion on the planet, so they assume that time is in motion. Actually, they are moving through time with no visible means of registering the stillness of time. If time ever moves, it will cause everything in the universe to collide, and all condensed energy or matter would go back into solution into space. When the scientists try to push a rocket through space by brute force, instead of going with the current of primary energy carrying matter in solution in space, they will discover that matter in solution or energy or space is anything but void. The speed of light established at 186,000 miles per second is not its speed. It is the speed of the positive A lines of force that extend throughout space. The speed of the negative B lines of force at 90 degrees to the positive lines is 202,000 miles per second. The speed of magnetism is the combined speeds of the positive and negative lines of force, or 388,000 miles per second. The difference between the positive and negative lines of force is 16,000 miles per second. The spacecraft uses this differential to cycle or phase their power. This accounts for their appearance of skipping. Their ships are caused to attract or repel the lines of force which are at right angles to their direction of travel. The spacecraft may move through our dense lower atmosphere at many thousands of miles per hour because they bring their own space with them. The force field around each ship does not allow our air to enter the field, consequently the ship does not get hot by friction. The ship inside of its own force field is protected by the field from debris in space, from air and density, and from sound shock waves. As no sound can penetrate through the field, they travel silently through our skies, except at very slow speeds, of which hovering they transmit a humming, throbbing tone. The field increases its resistance and strength when the speed of the ship increases. Space is infiltrated with debris. No principle of rocket-propelled missiles or ships is practical outside of our Earth's force field, as rockets do not create a protective field around themselves. Some of the debris, from the size of grains of rice to rocks larger than buildings, are traveling at speeds of hundreds of miles per second. Our planet operates in a self-generated magnetic field. Meteorites do not burn out in our atmosphere because they encounter oxygen. They disintegrate in the Earth's protective field of force. If the meteorite is negatively charged, it disintegrates in the positively charged strata of the force field. Our spacecraft, the Earth, operates in a field vortex of the Sun. The Earth is a combination battery, generator, and motor. Our atmosphere serves as a brush, a field, and a bearing. Our heat comes from our dense service atmosphere. The only reason we feel more heat on the side toward the sun is because the positive sun causes a brush effect in our negative surface atmosphere. The crust commuter is warmed from resistance and friction, while both rotating the planet as a motor and generating the force field. Gravity is not attraction nor magnetism. Gravity is resistance pressure brought about in all objects, bodies, or substance by the lines of force penetrating them toward the center of the Earth. The A positive male projective lines of force are trying to reach discharge or impregnation in the negative or female crust. The B negative female receptive lines of force are trying to reach fecundation or productive powers from the positive male core. The two lines of force A and B are working together in opposition to supply power for the continuous functions on and in the sphere and atmosphere, while the father centers the balance control through the G lines of light. Since the negative lines of force move faster than the positive lines, a negative body will always rotate counterclockwise from one viewpoint and positively charged body will rotate clockwise from the same viewpoint. The measurable speed of positive or negative lines of light energy will vary with the orbit of any planet. Measurements of light energy of positive polarity will conform to the orbit diameter of any given planet. 
measurements of negative polarity light energy will exceed the orbit diameter. Negative light energy cannot be accurately measured from the surface of a negatively charged planet such as the Earth. When the atmosphere of negative nature such as the Earth is balanced by positive charges from fusion particles it will cause moisture in the atmosphere to pile up at one magnetic pole and recede from the opposite polarity pole. It will cause a change in the planet's rotation speed and due to germination temperature change the eventual extinction of life forms that conform to that germination temperature. An excess of positively charged particles in the negative atmosphere will cause a planet to seek balance on new poles. Positive and negative lines of light force are always in an unbalanced state due to their different speeds of travel. When they are interrupted by a body or planet they bring about a motion because of their differential or the desire to reach rest. If the Earth's poles were vertical instead of inclined the Earth's orbit would be round instead of elliptical. If there were as much land south of the equator as there was north of it, the Earth's axis would not be inclined. Magnetism is not the causal force, but is the result of exhaust effect of light forces of positive and negative polarity in action. A magnet is not charged with magnetism. It is only serving as a polarity conductor of the lines of light energy passing through it. Both poles will attract a non-polarized conductor either pole will attract its opposite polarity or repel a like polarity. Influences of a negative nature lead the minds of humans to try to bring about positive effects. When these positive effects exceed the balance of natural negative charges on a negative planet, then the planet will rebalance itself to conform to light lines of force. Man is mostly space, filled with substance and form. The body does not derive energy from the food assimilated by it, the food is only transformed to become a conductor for light energy passing through the body. Power is only manifested through motion. Controlled power is that which is given direction. The discovery of the wheel gave mankind the means to an endless track of motion. Universal power throughout infinite space is demonstrated in the guided motion of all planets, moon, sun, galaxy, and nebula. None of these are haphazardly flying through space uncontrolled. Their course, orbit, rotation, and separation are maintained by precision interchange of relative power. All bodies in space are motored by primary light energy. Solar emanations and atomic energy are secondary powers or effects of the primary light energy in motion. The cross, in one shape or another, has always been the symbol of spiritual power. Scientifically, spiritual power is unseen power. Spiritual power can only be understood when it is manifest in the seen effect. This seen effect may be either in the range of the physical vision or outside of the physical limits. Primary light energy functions in many unlimited conditions and frequencies above and below the limits of physical vision. Everything in space that rotates, orbits, or manifests motions as to direction is powered by primary light energy. Wherever a body interrupts the lines of primary light, motion is effected. This is an immutable law. Within the human body is a universe in miniature. The axis of every crystal, atom, planet, or person is centered in unseen light of unlimited extent. The manifested boundaries or surface of any of these are insulated from all others of like polarity. The eternal existence of all of these is encompassed within the center of the axis. The cross is the symbol of power of the opposite polarities. By interrupting the primary lines of positive and negative light energy, a differential is established. By phasing this differential, control power is established in motion. This is the long hidden secret of the Maltese cross. Mal means negative tongues of flame or static electricity. Tis means interchange, two in one or differential between. When the differential between the positive and negative forces of light energy are controlled by phasing, they result in unlimited power through motion. If the motion exceeds the differential phase, disintegration will result. Electricity is a byproduct of magnetism. Gravity is the resistant pressure set up by the opposition of differential between the causal light energy and the effect magnetism. Verse Though I have set the patterns of my doing all about you, yet you see them not. 
I scatter seeds of light. I cast the shadows man calls day, and shadows of the shadows man calls night in repetition. I have paved the way for man to see. Has not my pattern stood the test to build another bird and nest again, where others were before? Cannot you see, O man of me, do as I say, do as I do? Do as I cause the way to be within your understanding of me in thee. Look to the pattern all around you, the fragrance of the essence of my love and flowers you have found, and in the cool beneath the tree. There I am to comfort you, and yet you question parts of me. Throughout my being I made thee man to carry on, to take the stand in my defense, to build a wall, to scale the fence of destiny. Not to follow whims of chance along the side, not to fall beneath the wheels of hate and fear that others may ride in comfort. Only look, feel the essence of my being. Absorb me in the breeze, reach me in the sun. My heart is warm, you are the one. Never have I set a pattern to lead you all astray. Any fear you feel, O oh man, you made along the way to me, and your arrival is delayed. Your stage is set, the curtain must come down, but only to go up again. My pattern is eternity. Repetition is the grade that leads to me, O oh man. From the harvest of my golden grain I separate the chaff. I break the bonds of freedom, lest man shall undo my works. I bring about a change in cycle so my balance shall not be disturbed. For when my laws are superseded, then must I strike from out of the night and scourge contamination from my being. For I am love, and I am freedom unto all my parts, but no part shall bind me to destruction. So as in times gone past, I wreak my wrath, I cleanse my house, I upset my creations, for none shall be above me. Chapter 4 The Trinity of Infinity Time is only understood by each conscious, intelligent unit from its established point of location and motion. Time cannot be measured. Only the repetition of motion, manifested as beginning and ending, can be measured. Each point of beginning and ending is only relative to the understanding of the individual establishing his point of view. The point of begin and end is established by one individual so as to bring another individual to the same point of understanding. Life, time, and being are understandable to intelligence alone. These three are non-existent only when intelligence has been excluded by ignorance in the individual. Life, time, and being can only exist in space, which is also infinite. Space is solution, composed of life, time, being, and intelligence. None of these can be measured in the absolute. They can only enter measurable dimension when individuals establish points from which to measure. Length, height, and width. These are only three measurements by which individuals can understand points from which relative measurements are started and ended. An inch, a foot, or a yard are not understood by people who use some other devised means of measurement. A relative difference between the measurements must be charted in order to understand the difference between their system and ours. Measurements can only be achieved in and by motion. No day or night could be measured without the motion of the earth revolving. No seasons or years would exist if the earth didn't orbit around the sun. The lifespan of people on the earth is only arrived at by the measurement of people's time on earth relative to past measurements. Belief, the illusion of reality, makes people accept the established record of lifespans of other people who have lived before them as a measure by which they should live and then die. The establishment of these points of beginning and end of life are only manifest in matter which has little or no intelligence. Matter cannot manifest motion without energy. Energy is the motion of thought manifested through matter. Intelligence which has no motion can only manifest through thought which causes motion to be manifest in matter by thought force. In symbology the creator is expressed by circle. This signifies a circumference encompassing everything. The circle is an endless line signifying infinity which has no beginning and no end. Life is an essence of the infinite solution we call space. You are living in an endless ocean of life as are the atoms, planets, and sun. You could not manifest life if life were not where you are, since life manifests everywhere in infinity. 
you cannot end life or begin life. You can only establish a point in the endless circle where you begin the circle of manifesting matter in life. Motion can be symbolized in the endless circle by the sign of an arrow. An arrow has always signified the way to go. All matter manifesting life in balanced motion moves in an arc. All matter manifesting life in unbalanced or unnatural balance is symbolized by an angle. The largest portion of you is space, whether it be the space in atoms, cells, or tissues composing the matter of your physical body, or the space your limited body as a unit occupies. Your intelligence is established by the limits of your individual concepts. Everyone uses the one mind. Your limit is only measurement of your ability to penetrate and absorb to the full your capacity of the infinite intelligence. Time is variable in your concept of it. One day seems longer or shorter than another day. You are an assembly of other forms of individual manifested life. You are a form enclosing various compositions of atomic, molecular, crystalline, and cellular structure. In turn, you are a smaller individual part of the living planet, solar system, and galaxy. Change is the result of motion. Time is measurable only in cycles of repetition. Every thought sets up motion. Every motion causes an effect. Your manifestation of matter in motion is the reflection of your true concept and understanding of infinity. Things in motion change and things that change are not eternal in any one pattern or form. T is the symbol of time. S is the symbol of space. B is the symbol of being. This is the caudacious or the triune of T. B and S, the vision of the eternal things, is what created opposites. Cycles are repetitions of the divisions. All divisions of opposites reach a fulcrum pinnacle of stillness at times. Everything in the universe comes under one or the other of the three aspects of infinity. Each of the opposites, such as here and there, cycles and interchange within itself like a swinging pendulum. Here becomes there as soon as you cross the street, and there becomes here. As you register your own changes in time, tomorrow becomes today as the earth revolves on its axis and today was tomorrow yesterday. Life and death also interchange so that being may manifest through the actions. Time cannot be a dimension because everything in motion and time will never repeat itself again exactly as it was before. If you could be not, then you could not be now because now was then before you arrived here from there. You are all the time, even when your body sleeps. The real you never sleeps, although it rests at the peak of the fulcrum in the interchange between the opposites of life and death. Flesh is only matter you assimilate as a requirement of this dense earthly condition. Flesh moves only because your real body moves it. Your matter, your matter body of flesh is not going to walk or talk after you get out of it. Death can only manifest in matter. This is the interchange that permits matter to return to what it was before you assimilated it into form. That portion of space which is you will always be in time somewhere. Expressing life here now is really death there then when you observe from the opposite side of things. The trinity of time, space, and being are the deity called God. Time, like thought, is infinite. Time does not go by. Everything that moves in the universe goes through time. Man measures time with clocks and calendars. If there were no measuring methods made by man, then there would be no yesteryears or tomorrow. Age would not exist. Today would be all there is. Individual beings are all part of each other in the universal sense, making up infinite being. God is not an individual, but is all of us. God being infinite and boundless, he is not something or someone man finds on the other side of the door called death. If this were true, he would not be infinite. Time is a medium through which the beings of God's creation manifest God's presence. No one can live in the past or the future who is not present now in God. Mind, through thought, is not limited to the present, for thought is also infinite. The creative mind of today is the same infinite mind that created the universe. 
Mind is God manifested in being. Your part of God is manifested when you use God's infinite mind to create through thought. Thought is the creative force that gives life to being. Space is not void. Space is the essence of intelligent mind. Man is a space filled with creative matter, manifesting the thought essence of form, and so are all things with life. Man is in God's image only when the thought of infinite mind is brought into being by individual thought to manifest other creative forms in time. Objects, structure, and things cannot manifest creative thought, as though they do not move through infinite time as individual parts of space or the essence of intelligence. To be, man must manifest motion in the medium of time which stands still. Anyone who does not have time to manifest God's doing has discarded thought in life. The matter manifesting their form will soon become inert. Death is not a doorway to God in heaven. Heaven is a doorway to God on earth. Verse Mortals bound in density who would be the cause, who would bide my time, the tree of thee in me stops not its growth. Though my parts would add to my divisions, my faceless cosmic clock records no time. For man is not a cause, but rather a result of me. For I alone am cause of things to be. And though the mortal man would wind my clock of destiny and set the powder keg of destruction at my feet, how can he know the woe? For I alone am cause, and man is the result of me, bound to destiny. An indestruction bent reverse course, and all the light spent in his being is hidden by the curtain of ignorance drawn before me. Though I alone am cause, my wrath is not aroused, I tear the shroud. I bring man back through birth within the light, and test my right expressed in progression of my parts. I write the drama, man plays the fool. Then I applaud and make the tool sharper to my cause through experienced results. Man cannot set my clock, for I alone can read the time of my eternity, and so it is. I set the stage, I play the part. I cause the curtain to come down while man sits in the audience of my universe applauding, not knowing why. Though I have scattered my creation throughout the endless space of me, I use my tools to manifest my doing. To do my works, no task is small. I choose my tools. I trust them all until they fail me. Then I put another to the test. My tools are not the tools of man that rust and break and fall away. My tools are living instruments that work with love throughout the day and night. To each I gave the choice to be an instrument of me. Chapter 5 Unseen Scales The accompanying drawing is to explain the one universal principle of life. This principle is standard on any planet in space and in all life forms, whether insect, animal, bird, human, man, or spirit. In the drawing you are looking at the cut ends of a negative B line of light energy, of course greatly enlarged. They are traveling away from you and rotating in a counterclockwise direction. These are the female receptive negative polarity lines of light energy. At right angles or at 90 degrees to the B lines of light energy are the positive A lines traveling from left to right and rotating in a clockwise direction. These two lines of light energy can only unite in birth or death birth by induction and death by short-circuiting. God controls physical birth and death by allowing the rebirth of individuals through the living instrument of his choosing. Only when he removes his insulating qualities can a seed be born into another repetition of life progression. Only when you have lived his purpose for you in each life grade does he graduate you into the next grade. If your actions prove to him that through violation of his infinite laws you will not pass this grade, then you die physically and your eternal atomic cluster of consciousness is brought back through rebirth into the same grade in order to pass on to the next higher grade. Rebirth into the same grade, because of failure to pass it, is the only time that the so-called reincarnation takes place. When you were created as man in God's image, you were made an atom of matter charged with opposite polarities in your proton-electron individuality, you are given individual motion. The space within your electron orbit shell boundary was endowed by the creative spirit with his unseen intelligence. 
As you progress through the mobile highways of light energy, you encounter the experience of meeting other atoms of different elements of matter. With each new experience, you added another atom to your consciousness. Soon the consciousness began to increase in size, composed of many atoms of different experiences and of different elements. Your consciousness is composed of the same number of atoms as the number of experiences you have had since your creation as an individual. Experience is recorded in the consciousness, and in consciousness is the eternal record of your knowing. Education and learning are recorded in the brain and can only be used in this mortal grade of life. When the brain is buried with the body, all the learning and intellectual education ends unless it has been applied through experience. To reach the true intelligence of many experiences and permanent knowledge requires going within. Through meditation you can become aware of your consciousness and unseen intelligence you accumulated in the past. The largest portion of your original atom creation was the space within the shell boundary. This space is, was, and will always be the unseen portion of your part of the supreme intelligence. As you travel through the maze of lifelines, you often encounter resistance set up by those who think they are going in the right direction and that you should conform to their direction of travel. But each was given the individual right to choose his direction. Scientifically, the correct course is at 45 degrees to the lines of light and in a progressive spiral into finer frequencies of light. This maintains the balance between the positive and negative lines of light energy. Every body that in interrupts the lines of force will establish a field around it. Stationary bodies such as trees, rocks, or mountains establish fields, the same as atoms, planets, or suns. On the surface of negative polarity, the height of every species is established by the field around it, through for vegetation and trees grow to a common species average. The field set up in a tree is such that the lines of force passing through the tree establish a vortex in its body. This vortex starts at the surface of the ground. Sap does not only go up to a tree, but it goes around in a spiral as it goes up. The shape of each plant or stationary form of life is established by the boundaries of its vortex or its field or its aura. Everything everywhere is encompassed in such an auric field. In life that moves, such as animals, the soul force in the body establishes form from the central intelligent master cell. This frequency of the animals is much lower than the human form, of course. The animal body of humans is the manifested filler composed of inert matter that is required in the frequency upon the Earth's surface. The soul force is distributed through the inert matter by the bloodstream. The man body of reality establishes the field. In climbing a hill, you have to push the vortex upward. It is much easier for some people so climb than others. This is because their polarity balance is near to neutrality. If the physical negative vortex surrounded by the aura reaches a balance between what we term spirit and physical, the person can climb a hill without effort because it is not required that he push the inert matter upward in defiance of the laws of gravity. The human vortices also start and end at the surface of the ground. In man, balance is achieved above the Earth's surface. The negative vortex has its apex downward at the feet. The positive vortex of the real body has its apex upward above the head. When the balance between the physical reflection and the real body, or the consciousness, of your being reaches a state of equilibrium, these vortices will be of the same length, the same diameter, and the same speed of rotation. You can levitate yourself with the forces established at a zero point between these two opposing polarities. Through these vortices and with them you can establish a field of protection around you, not necessarily by willful direction but by actions you manifest. If your thought is good, your actions are of a giving nature. If you are concerned with the welfare of others, you automatically establish a field of protection around you because the universal mind compensates directly and equally by every thought and action. The zero balance between the physical vortex and the vortex of the real, conscious, everlasting you is difficult to hold. You may be unbalanced slightly in one direction or the other, in one belief or the other, in the manifested action you perform. The purpose in your being on the surface of the planet is to bring about a balance, first in your own control and next, a balance between each of you, an understanding, a compassion, a love that is not expressed in words. This balance cannot be maintained mechanically, for you don't know which vortex to increase or decrease. 
but by following the basic principle of the golden rule, by doing all things in moderation, you will arrive at a point of equilibrium where you will be able to know which side of the zero you must bring up or down. When you reach a state of zero polarity between your individual vortices, you are at one with the infinite mind. You can know anything, you can see anything, and you can be anything of your own choice so long as you maintain that balance. If you associate closely with people, these vortices can leak, thereby causing you to acquire disease or character conditions of ones you associate with. This is also responsible for what we call love, not the real love, but the physical attraction of one for another, oftentimes of one sex for the same sex. If one has a predominantly negative physical vortex and another has a predominantly spiritual vortex, these two vortices are attracted to each other. This is not the condition of love, it is a condition of mutual attraction by two people who may seem to be entirely opposite in every other respect. Someone at a distance from you cannot affect you, but in close association you will assimilate characteristics of another person. These are natural things because nature wants to balance everything. The spiritual person is attracted to the predominant materialist and vice versa. The leakage of vortices is something you should watch for. You can assimilate character, understanding, and love by association with people who demonstrate these characteristics. Therefore, you should try to associate with these types of people. The vortex of the human physical body will also cause people to be repelled. Oftentimes you will meet one whom you immediately dislike intensely. This is not a condition of knowing the other person. It is a natural condition of polarities repelling each other. These things are beyond the scale of records as far as individual goes. It is not possible to compute and understand the vortex of all individuals. Individually, however, you can try to understand your own and the effects of the vortices of other people upon you. But remember, one can be close to you and discharge your vortex by an opposite charge, thereby causing you to feel physically tired and drained of life. Study your friends at a safe distance, about six feet, before you associate closer, and you may discover what you term an enemy in the friendship you thought was yours. Verse O oh man, my light is not for the victor, nor for the one who falls in defeat. My light is to the one who gains understanding of my ways. My arms are not extended either to the right or the left, but are centered to balance the living individual parts of my being. Though forces may oppose you every move, my strength lies in the power to meet the opposition. Though evil may tempt you, my light is brightest when the evil is overcome, for evil is not of my creation, O man. Evil is brought about by those who falter on the way to me. Never, never in all my eternity shall man control the path to me. The paths are my ways, and man can only travel on my path. In all my doings I have brought about a pattern of progression. None can turn about my works, none can interpret my way. Those who follow in darkness can only trip themselves, stand within the light of me, for I am light of thee, O man, and I can only shine when you have made the way in progress of my doing. Lean not upon another, only accept thy brother as one to help one to assist along the way, that unity in numbers may bring about progress in my infinite light. Fear not, fear not, there is no fear within my being of you. Fear is only added by the things that you do not know within the pattern of my ways. Reach within, I am there. None can scare you where you find the me in thee. Stand, stand upright. Death is only that which adds to those who have performed the grade. Fear no evil. Stand within my light. Feel my living light within you. Know that I am there throughout eternity. Chapter 6 The Angels of Space and the angel that talked with me came again, and waked me, as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. Zechariah 4.1 This paragraph fits almost exactly the experience that I had on August 24, 1953. Angels were always considered by me to be some vaporous type of afterlife that just floated about here and there. My entire concept of things changed with the physical manifested experience of one of these angels to me. From the position of the full moon, I judge it to be about 2 a.m. Here on the desert, it is nearly as bright in full moonlight as it is in daylight. I awaken, not knowing why, but sensing that something had happened that had disturbed me. We sleep outside about six months out of the year, so that you can see that our bedroom was readily accessible. As I looked up from the bed, I saw a man standing about six feet away from the foot of the bed. 
This was not uncommon as we operate a public airport and we have been awakened many times by our dogs barking at people coming in during the night. However, at this time not a sound was heard from the dogs. This I recall later and it was certainly unusual. I asked the man what he wanted, thinking his car might have given him trouble and he had walked into the remote airfield as many others had done before. At the same time I sat up in bed. Beyond the man, about a hundred yards away, hovered a glittering, glowing spaceship, seemingly about eight feet off the ground. I knew then that he was not having car trouble. The man said, My name is Solgonda. I would be pleased to show you our craft. My left hand and arm were still under the covers. I pinched my wife on the side to awaken her. Sogunda smiled like he knew what I was doing. I pinched her again. She normally wakens very easily. I didn't want her to miss what was taking place. Solgunda smiled again, still no response from my wife, so I pinched her hard. Solgunda nearly laughed aloud. My wife didn't wake up, and somehow I realized Solgunda had her under some kind of control. I hopped out of bed clad only in my undershorts. Solgunda preceded me for a few yards, and then I caught up with him and walked beside him. Not a word was said as we walked to the ship. In fact, I never said another word to him. From the time I got out of bed until I returned to it, every time I thought of something to say, he was answering me before I could speak the first word of any sentence. This proved to me their perfect ability to communicate by thought transference. As we approached the craft, I began to get butterflies in my stomach from about 50 feet away. Coming nearer, my hair seemed to want to stand up on end. This feeling disappeared instantly upon entering the ship. The craft was about 36 feet in diameter and about 19 feet high. It looked like the same type that George Adamski photographed in his close-up. The interior was about 18 feet in diameter and about 10 feet high. The walls were of some opalescent material like our imitation mother of pearl. There was a shelf around the inside below the portholes about an elbow height from the floor when one was standing. A column extended from the ceiling to the floor in the center of the ship. Three other men were on the craft when we went in. They were all the same approximate height of Solgunda, who was about five feet seven inches tall. These three men smiled but never spoke, and I didn't learn their names. Solgunda demonstrated their retractable seats, which formed a lounge which extended out of the walls. He showed me several celestial navigation instruments, and then we went below the main deck, through the manhole, into the power-generating room. Below the deck it was necessary to crouch down on a circular catwalk. There the power mechanism was exposed to view and I understood the principle of operation which Solgunda apparently picked up by telethought. We left the ship after what I judged to be about 20 minutes. Solgunda walked back to bed with me where my wife was peacefully sleeping. When I climbed back into bed, I wondered if the strange feeling I had in my stomach was going to affect me in any way. Before I could put all the thoughts into words, Solgunda said, No, you'll be all right, and instantly disappeared. About a minute later, the ship slipped slowly into the sky and was out of sight in less than a minute. Later we checked the hovering spot with a magnetic compass. The vortex set up by the field from the ship would swing the needle 10 degrees easterly in walking to the vortex center and 5 degrees westerly in passing out of the center on the opposite side. People who went there a week later to eat their lunch became nauseated and couldn't eat. I now know the angels are people that come out of space. They not only colonize planets and communicate by thought, but they spend their time helping other people understand life. Right now they are around and on our plan to help humanity out of the mess we have gotten ourselves into. People are people everywhere in the Creator's universe. The only difference is that most of them have followed the universal laws and thereby progressed while we on earth have not. You had a body before you came here on earth, and you'll have another one when you leave. But maybe then you'll be called an angel. Genesis tells of God making man, but it doesn't say anything about Him making angels. This further proved to me that angels are the race of man. The first mention of an angel in the Bible comes in Genesis 16:7. In this verse, the angel is referred to as an angel of the Lord. The sages of biblical times knew the mysteries and actions of the esoteric laws. Thus it was known to them that everything that was motivated by natural forces traveled in an arc or a curved path. Anything that moved in an other path of motion was unnatural and was symbolically termed an angel angle. People living in Abraham's time therefore referred to anything that was of an unnatural motion by their point of view on the earth's surface as an angle. These people didn't know anything about weather balloons, modern airplanes, and high-flying jets. They only knew they knew that they flew in the sky were winged birds. 
When they observed a spacecraft or man coming out of the sky, they naturally pictured them with wings like the birds. Since the appearance of men or ships in the sky was not a naturally happening occurrence, they symbolized the sky visitors as angles. The way these people record any happening was to have one of their scribes write it down. Like a newspaper reporter of today who wasn't present at the actual scene, the scribe had to write to it as it was ascribed to him by witnesses. Whenever the people wanted a copy of a written record, they found a scribe to copy it for them. The scribes of those days got things twisted as badly as the reporters and newspapers of today do. Due to error interpreting the symbol, the scribes in copying the account of the angles coming out of the sky wrote angel instead of angle. All copies made from any erroneous one usually repeated the same mistake, so angles became angels. In a number of the experiences describing contact with the people in the spacecraft, the Earth people making the contact stated that the space people disappeared before their eyes. As this also occurred to me during my contact, I can understand their amazement. The uninformed would say they dematerialized. The technically minded person would say they went into the fourth dimension. The psychiatrist would say that the people suffered from hallucination. None of these are true. The reason our space friends can disappear is because our physical vision depends on light reflection off things in order to see. The wavelength of visible light extends from approximately 4,000 angstroms, the extreme violet, to 7,700 angstroms, extreme red. Compared with known radiation spectrum as a whole, the range of physical vision is extremely limited. This is comparable to looking at the landscape through a crack between two boards and seeing that the landscape outside the range of vision doesn't exist or is dematerialized or is a hallucination. Our space friends know light inside out and backwards. In order to eliminate the need for weapons which would injure others, they have developed what they call the perfect defense. This is a small object about 2 by 2 inches square and about half an inch thick. It is rounded corners and is generally carried on a cord around the neck and suspended under the blouse. Their ability to read thoughts allows them to be aware of any danger or threat, and all they have to do is tap this device with either hand and they appear to disappear. The object is actually a crystal battery that stores piezoelectricity that is generated by cutting magnetic lines of force or the same as static electricity. The nearest thing to this electricity stored by the crystal battery that we know of we refer to as the spirit body or aura. The electrical spirit body of people varies with their environment and the chemical makeup of their physical body. This is why you feel good when you are with some people and feel drained or exhausted after association with others. Some people have strong spirit bodies in others. When the scout ship landed here in August of 1953, I observed this object. Solgunda was turning it by the corners between his hands. Suddenly he opened two opposite ends of it and pointed at the granite rocks of the mountains. I saw a pencil lead sized stream of light between the object and the mountain. I thought he was shooting something near the mountain. Later he explained that he was charging a device. He said they charge various other pieces of their equipment over granite mountains. This is due to the piezoelectric effect set up by quartz and its granite matrix. When they discharge the crystal battery by pressing on either side of it, it releases the charge into their electric body or aura and causes light to bend around them, therefore appearing to disappear to the limited physical vision of anyone who is watching them. They do not dematerialize or go into another dimension. They are just as solid and physical as always, but they are outside of the limits of physical vision. This same device was used by the man Jesus when he disappeared out of the crowds of people and again when he reappeared under the people after three days. In St. Luke 24, 13, 21, it tells how two of the people walked down the road talking with him. Verse 31 said, And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Some teachings would have you believe that this was a vision of the people had. Jesus discounted this himself in St. Luke 24, 36, 39, when he said, Handle me and see, for the Spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other one left. St. Luke 17.35.36 Either you have faith in the prophecy of the Bible, or you must reject the whole book. The Bible is an accurate account of events that repeat themselves in cyclical repetition. The above paragraphs say a division of humankind will be made. One shall be taken, and the one shall be left. Who is to make the decision? Who will do this judging of humanity to see who will be taken and who will be left? 
Every day that passes, you individually are establishing your right to be taken by the way that you live. You are manifesting your choice by your action and your thinking. Each person adds increase to their vibratory body aura by conforming to the laws of the universe. Your aura, or the frequency of the body force field, will determine whether you are taken or left. A definite vibration will be established in the force field surrounding each spacecraft that will pick up people. If your body aura or force field conforms with or exceeds the established level of the spacecraft force field, then you will enter the ship. Remember, you are now qualifying or disqualifying yourself to be taken aboard. None can qualify another. Jesus cannot save you. Some narrow-minded sects of religious fanatics have established that only 144,000 people will be saved. Of course, they are part of the chosen few. Those who will be taken and those who will be saved are two separate conditions. The next thing one asks is, where will the people who are picked up be taken? This is answered in St. Luke 17.37. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Naturally, the eagles gather together in the sky. This was said in a parable at that time because the people in the biblical days didn't know what it was to fly in the skies. It was not meant for the people of those days. It was said for the people of our time. The space people or angels explain that the people who have been taken aboard their craft in those times were not taken aboard because they were better than anyone else. They explain that those people were taken aboard for their own test purposes to see how different types of people would react. Each one which has been so honored was readily accessible in a remote place. They were of cooperative minds and each represented a different type of earth people. This mass pickup of people will take place prior to the planets rebalancing on new poles. This cataclysm will wipe out the destructive mammon lover who will be left on the earth. After the earth is re-stabilized on its new poles and the continents and oceans have changed, then the people who have been taken up in the air will be landed back on the surface. Watch ye therefore and pray always, that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of God. St. Luke 21.36 O man, in the rings established within the light of me, orbiting my system, I am potency that moves a nebula, that causes suns to shine. Though some upon this portion of myself have devious ways to violate my infinite wisdom, it is not I who judge nor pay the price. As in my cycles, as in my phases, as in my eons, I have established precision in the order of my parts. And though a voice comes through to you unrecognized by mortals, realize in the voice, I am the potent substance forever of life, pulsing through your being unto eternity. I separate the white from black and color boundaries do I set, for all my creations are of me, from lowest animal to tree and all that is. I am the unseen force that manifests in everything you do. Impotent substance clay of me cannot interfere except to bring about conditions that reflect upon the garment that you wear. O man, never shall you find an end to me. There is no place I cannot be an M. You make your hell by deeds you do in violation of my ways. One who says, Hell is a place in my infinity, is violating me. Reaction is the only hell, rebounding from a spell when you excluded me, O oh man. Some preach there is a hell for others, never for themselves. Watch out for this. Their ego is leading them astray. Through space and time and place, remember, I am there and here with you. I have no hell for man of me. Man who believes there is a hell is reviving imagery of experiences he has had all along the road to me. Chapter 7. Prodigal Mother The levels or strata of substance around the crust of the earth are separated by insulations of the one still light. These layers of insulation are the activating intelligence of the Creator in relation to our planet. Intelligence infiltrates all the matter in the substance strata. Each alternate matter strata is of opposite polarity and rotates opposite to the matter strata on each side of it. The earth is a battery. The strata are the plates. God separates and centers all things through the G lines of still light. He activates all things through the A positive and B negative lines of force. The center of our planet consists of a sun. The sun as the core rotates in the opposite direction to the moving crust. 
Between the fiery center of the positively charged core and the negative crust is an isolating, non-conductive strata of fluid glass or obsidian 600 miles in thickness. All ruptures of the crust are caused by atmospheric conditions. There are several well-defined areas on the surface of Earth where vortices of magnetic energy are located. In due time, these vortices will bring about the rupture of the crust, termed volcanic action. The earthquake faults were brought about by interruptions of the force field around the Earth. Planets without moisture in their atmosphere do not rotate. As A and B lines of force enter the atmosphere and the crust of the planet parallel to the equator and at 90 degrees from each other and the axis, they spiral to each pole and arrive there before the planet is made one quarter of a turn. Emitting from the poles, they encounter resistance in the form of uninterrupted A and B lines of force, bringing about the phenomena termed aurora. Every planet in the universe moves in curved lines of travel. This is not because they were thrown off by the sun or central body. If they were, they would not orbit. Anything thrown off of a rotating object will travel in a straight line outward, though on the Earth it may fall because of gravity. The reason planets or electrons orbit around a central body is because they are powered by light energy. Space outside of the Earth's atmosphere is blacker than the blackest ink. Our sun looks like any other bright star, not like a ball of fire. Only the brightest stars can be seen. Pictured in the drawing is what has often been termed the four dark corners. The positive quarter or spring season of the Earth's orbit is only predominantly positive relative to the Earth's pathing through it. At all other times when light energy is not interpreted by a body or a planet, the negative or female lines of force predominate. The old axiom, women first, is applicable throughout the universe. As the sun crosses the Earth's equator on March 21st, it affects a positively charged cyclic predominance in the negative northern hemisphere. In the arc from March 21st to September 23rd, the sun tries to attract the Earth to it, this causes the negatively charged Earth to describe the arc of its orbit from March 21st to June 21st. This is noted in the drawing as the positive quarter. The reason the Earth proceeds toward the negative lines of light energy in the positive quarter is because the negative lines of light energy have been weakened from passing through the Sun's force field or positively charged vortex. As the Earth moves from June 21st to September 23rd, it starts in a downward direction of its elliptical arc. This is called the active quarter. These conditions are being viewed from the northern hemisphere in this explanation. In the southern hemisphere, the active and rest quarters would be opposite from those shown here. As a negatively charged Earth follows its path in the active quarter, it is attracted by the positive sun on the negative northern hemisphere and by the negative lines of light energy which are acting on the positive southern hemisphere. The positive lines of light energy are repelling on the positively predominant southern hemisphere. The active quarter is summer, our hottest season of the year. This heat is caused by the increase in resistance, set up gradually by the sun extending its path on the earth laterally to its northernmost extreme. In the daytime it is hotter because the sun is farther into the negative northern hemisphere, thereby setting up more resistance in our negatively charged atmosphere and the negatively charged crust of the negative hemisphere. At the midway point between June 21st and September 23rd, the Earth also reaches its maximum exposure to the resistance of both the positive and negative lines of light energy. This increase in resistance from all three forces at the same time generate more heat. As the Earth proceeds in its path from September 23rd to December 21st, the days become shorter as the Sun starts changing from the equator into the positively charged southern hemisphere. The positive Sun's effect on a positive hemisphere repels the planet. The negatively charged light lines of energy predominate and repel the planet from their direction to travel, causing it to arc through its orbit to December 21st. From December 21st to March 21st, the negative predominance of the lines of light energy are again decreasing, and at Z in the rest quarter, all forces reach balance for an instant. At Z in the rest quarter, the field or vortex of the sun decreases both the positive and negative lines of light energy. The sun has reached a halfway point between the equator and its southernmost lateral extreme. The positive lines of light energy begin to attract the negatively charged planet and the increasing predominance of the negatively charged northern hemisphere. 
the sun begins to attract the increasing negative predominance of the planet, and the negative lines of light energy begin to repel the increasing negative predominance of the northern hemisphere. The sun and all of our planets are moving through space in the direction indicated by the arrow in the rest quarter of the drawing. Everything in the universe is trying to reach balance by traveling in the rest quarter direction. The fact that the Earth has more land mass in the northern hemisphere than in the southern hemisphere is the reason for the Earth's orbit being slightly elliptical. Land sets up more polarity action than water. The Sun acts upon the predominance of the polarity of the hemisphere presented to it by the equinox altern alternation. At March 21st and December, September 23rd, both the northern and southern hemispheres are attracted and repelled equally and oppositely for an instant by the Sun. The Sun reaches its maximum attraction on the Earth on June 21st and repels at its maximum on December 21st. The light lines of positive and negative energy act upon the Earth as an alternating, negatively charged body. The Sun acts upon the oppositely polarized hemispheres as they are presented to it in the seasons. The relative increase or decrease in polarity action varies continuously depending upon the tilt of the Earth, the resistance of the Sun's force field, and effects of the quarterly cycle upon each succeeding cycle. People have less resistance to disease in winter. Because at that quarter of the Earth's orbit, the life light lines of energy are reduced due to passing through the rotating vortex of the Sun's force field. Any change of polarity predominance in the Earth's atmosphere or crust will result in climatic changes. This is how positively charged particles from hydrogen bombs have caused weather changes and extremes throughout the world. Our atmospheric strata is only a thin layer of gases and moisture emitted from the crust. Our frequent charging of the atmosphere with radioactive substances is a slow process of self-annihilation. The temperature drop noted after each atomic bomb blast is caused by the inrush of frigid air from higher strata. If 30 atomic bombs were exploded in 30 days, our Earth population would be forced underground by the extreme cold. Verse, O oh man, I expand the buds in the springtime of my seasons. I bring forth hues of colors in the sunset. I breathe forth fragrance from the flowers. I build a nest. I surge with joy and love that you may grow in unity and compassion. I bring about the warmth of my breath in the season of my summers, that man may know the fullness of the harvest, that man may see the repetition of my doing and example all about him. And then I bring the cold, I change my colors, I cool my breath, the leaves of me fall to nourish a soil, that once again I may come into the fullness of my springtime. And then I breathe my holy breath through naked branches into the blast of winter. I crown my mountains with the purity of whiteness and mantles of snow. I freeze my river so that man may know the change that comes about in the season of my densities. I blast the breath of storm and I tire of cold and bring my seasons and cycles into repetition. My numberless worlds are there for man, the mysteries are there at hand to see, so man may know the me in thee. When he solves the problems of my doing, then I shall know he will grow in me. He will know with me eternity. This same principle of light energy maintains the Earth's cycle of day and night, temperature, tides, and relation and effects of the moon on the Earth and her people. The sun does not emit life of itself. The sun transmits positively polarized force which reacts upon the Earth because of its negative polarity. The moon is one of the bodies acting as a governor to the Earth. The Earth's tides are a fluid drive connection between the motor generator battery Earth and the governor moon. Gravity on the moon has no effect upon the Earth. The only effect of the moon upon the Earth is by polarity action of the Earth's force field and by interruption of the light lines of force. The Earth is surrounded by a self-generated force field. Nothing inside of the Earth's force field is affected by anything outside of it except through the attracting or repelling effects of polarity in the line of light energy or the sun. Gravity within the force field generated by any body is not subject to the action of any body outside of the force field, unless the body outside of the force field is of an opposite polarity. The moon and the earth are both of negative polarity, as are all humans in their physical substance, and all bodies that can be seen by reflected light. All negative bodies generate a positive force field, and all positively charged bodies generate a negative force field. Temperature is the result of light forces acting in opposition to each other. Magnetism is an effect of primary light energy in opposition produced as a result of its interruption by any body. 
Electricity is an effect of magnetism in polarity opposition. Heat is an effect of electricity in opposition. Contraction and expansion are opposite effects of heat, or the lack of it. The earth force field is the boundary of everything inside of it. Nothing can come into it or go out of it through with, without conforming to its positive polarity. The space people can alternate the polarity of the force field around their ships to conform to the positive polarity of the earth's force field while they are passing through it. The moon never was hurled from the earth and it will never be part of the earth due to the earth's force field. Let us start in the positive quarter and rotate the moon around the earth. The small arrows shown on the moon indicate the direction of the forces set up by polarity affecting the moon. The A arrows represent attractive forces and the R arrows stand for repelling forces. At all times these forces are changing their predominance, which establishes the moon's orbit around the earth. The moon's orbit speed is fixed according to its change of negative polarity. The secondary light rays from the positive sun and the positive line of light energy warm the morning cycle from 6 a.m. to 12 noon. This occurs by the attractive resistance heat effect in our negative atmosphere and crust of the earth. The force field does not decrease these polarity effects because their polarities are both positive, therefore they offer no resistance to each other. The heat registered during the hottest part of the day is in the active quarter from 12 noon to 6 p.m. Higher temperatures are registered in this quarter because the sun and positive lines of light energy are setting up attraction resistance within our atmosphere, and the negative lines of light energy are setting up repelling resistance. Two forces are working in attraction to the Earth's polarity, and one force is working in opposition to it. The negative lines of force also meet resistance of the positive force field, which acts as a reflector. From 6 p.m. to midnight is the negative quarter. Both the positive lines of light energy and the sun's attractive forces are eliminated, and the negative lines of light energy maintain only the heat of resistance by repulsion. The forces of the active quarter fade away, and the negative physical bodies of people become tired and sleepy during the negative quarter. In the rest quarter from midnight to 6 a.m., the sun's positive force, the positive lines of light energy, and the negative lines of light energy set up no resistance of attractive or repelling forces. So the atmosphere and crust cool off in the coldest quarter of the cycle, because the earth is shielded from the three forces. For the same reason more people die from natural causes in the rest quarter than in the other three quarters combined. This is because their physical resistance is low. In other words, none of the three life forces of light are active in the physical body during the rest quarter. This is what rest is, the lack of polarity opposition forces. Everything is meant to rest in the rest quarter, and all of nature does it, except in cases where the positive polarity is predominant. People on a predominantly negative polarity cannot stand to work on a graveyard shift. People of a predominantly positive polarity are often called lazy because their active quarter and rest quarter reactions are opposite and they want to sleep in the daytime. It has been maintained by science that the moon causes the tide. This is not so any more than the profession that heats come from the sun. The polarity predominance alternates between the northern and southern hemisphere of the earth and causes the forced field to oscillate. The erratic orbit path of the moon follows the oscillation of the earth's force field. The earth's positive force field rotates opposite to the earth and the moon's orbit. Interruptions of the light lines of force by other bodies or planets causes variable effects on the earth and its reactions are transmitted to its self-generated force field. The earth's force field causes the tides as it was an opposite polarity to the water. The fact that it is strongest at the point of most resistance, where the moon is, explains the reason that science professes that the moon attracts the water causing the tides. A negative moon cannot attract a negative body of water. It would repel the water. In that case, the tides would be lowest on the earth on the side toward the moon. The cyclical interruption by the moon between the positive and the negative lines of light energy in the earth is what causes diurnal inequalities in the four tides of the day and the age of the tide. Water being a fluid accounts for the equal effect on the opposite side of the earth. The fact that the force field is rotated in the opposite direction to the earth and is strongest at a point between the greatest resistance of attraction by both the earth and the moon is what causes the tides to lag, a fact which has never been explained satisfactorily by science. 
Magnetism in and around the Earth is a result of the Earth's interruption of the lines of primary light energy. Electricity is a result of interruption of the Earth's magnetism by a generator. As the lines of primary light energy are in motion, any body that interrupts them will move according to its capacity and polarity charge. Electricity is the second byproduct of primary light energy. Magnetism is the first. Neither can exist without the other because they are both part of each other. In the drawing we show only the positively charged core of the earth, the insulation, the negative crust, and the negative atmosphere. Actually these charged strata and insulating layers extend to strata around Mars and Venus. The drawing is made with the sun shining in the center of the active quarter from a 45 degree angle. The sun is the alternator that changes polarity predominance from one hemisphere to the other every six months. The A and the R circles indicate the direction of the attracting and repelling forces. The negative primary light attracts the positive core in the negative quarters and repels the negative crust. The opposite is true in the positive quarter. These attracting and repelling brushes are changing position continuously as the Earth orbits. The atmosphere is actually a part of the crust and is of the same polarity. It acts as a bearing for the crust to turn in. The atmosphere and oceans are affected by the helical vortex set up in each hemisphere which rotate in opposite directions. This is caused by the depleted lines of primary light giving their energy to cause motion of the planet. As they are depleted they try to reach rest so they head for the points of least motion which is at the poles. Naturally polarity seeks opposite polarity always. A compass needle does not point to the north magnetic pole because it is attracted to it by an opposite polarity. Its negative charged end is only pressed in the position parallel to the lines of light force going by it. The intelligence in the molecular arrangement of its negative charge wants to go with the other positively charged light lines in motion around it. For the same reason the negative Earth or our other planets were never part of the positive Sun. The planets being of opposite polarity could be attracted to it but never thrown off from the Sun. The Sun's insulation stratum prevents the positive polarity of the Sun from attracting the negative Earth to it. Light is transmitted into energy by penetration into the matter that interp interrupts it. The matter then gains motion. A negative vortex of light energy produces decelerating effects in negative matter. A positive vortex of light energy produces accelerating effects in negative matter. You can apply the principle of the Earth's crust and core rotation in opposite directions to an electric motor. Mount both ends of the shaft on fixed bearings. These bearings will suspend the entire motor. Run the two wires from the motor case to two copper rings mounted on insulation on one end of the shaft inside the fixed bearing. Brushes from the power supply must contact the two rings. Be sure to remove the base of the motor and balance the field case on the fixed bearings. Power applied will rotate the armature in one direction and the field case in the other direction at different speeds. By applying a pulley to the shaft and another to the case, then running V-belts from both pulleys to a common point of work, the torque force of the normal base type electric motor will also be applied to the work. One V-belt will have to be twisted 180 degrees between the motor pulley and the pulley of the work to counteract the opposite rotation in the motor. This uses the torque force to do useful work, reduces speed, and wear on the bearing and furnishes more power for greater work output. This is the same way the core and crust of the earth function, each being a balance to the other. The crust is the field and the core is the armature. Unfortunately, the explosion of kiloton and megaton power A and H bombs have unbalanced natural conditions. This will bring about a steady increase in subterranean temperatures in the northern hemisphere and lowering of temperatures in the southern hemisphere. The rapid shifting of the magnetic poles registered on the surface is the result of these bombs unbalancing the planet. Wherever the magnetic poles on the negative polarity surface are found, they indicate where the axis of the positive polarity core is located under the crust. The core is encased in fluid obsidian 600 miles thick. Oscillations of the core, which were set up by the reaction to the bomb forces, will cause an increase in volcanoes and earthquakes due to the increased frictional heat in the fluid separator. Throw the fine balance of the electric motor case out and see what happens to the armature if it were floating in a fluid. 
any spinning gyroscope will wobble if it is moved from its plane of rotation. The Earth works like a gyroscope. Magnets, atoms, planets, and people all have polarities of either positive or negative predominance. Because a body predominance in one polarity does not mean that the substance of its composition does not include matter of the opposite polarity. When your positive polarity body reaches predominance, your negative polarity physical body dies. The same thing applies to planets, magnets, or atomic structure. The nuclear or positive polarity devices being exploded in our negative polarity atmosphere are rapidly bringing about a condition of polar change on the Earth's surface. The emission of positive polarity particles or fallout from the H-bomb tests are unbalancing the polarity predominance of the Earth. The positive fallout particles are attracted to the negative polarity, north magnetic pole. When the positive particles fall, they are on negative polarity ice. The resistance causes heat, causing the ice to melt. The negative polarity water released by melting is repelled by the more predominantly negative polarity crust of the Earth into a less predominantly negative polarity atmosphere. In the air, it is attracted in a spiral course to the positively predominant southern hemisphere, where most of it is attracted to the positive polarity south magnetic pole. This causes ice to build up at the southern pole and melt at the northern pole, bringing unbalance to the planet's axis indirectly from the explosion of nuclear bombs. The magnetic poles registered on the surface of the Earth's crust are in reality the axis points of the Earth's positive polarity core. As more bomb tests transmute negative polarity matter to a positive polarity condition, the effects can be registered in many ways. The magnetic declination shown on the Los Angeles R2 sectional aeronautical chart dated March 10, 1953, shows that the 15 degree east magnetic declination line at 115 degrees 50 minutes west longitude at 34 degrees north latitude line. The chart dated September 27, 1955 shows a shift of the 15 degrees east magnetic declination to 117 degrees 2 minutes west. This is a change of 1 degree 12 minutes in 2.5 years or 28.8 minutes per year. Formerly, it was slightly over 9 per year. The main reason for low layers of smog over most of the big cities is because the carbon particles in the air are not repelled upward as they used to be before the advent of the H-bomb test. The polarity of these particles normally become negative. They are becoming less negative due to the fact that carbon assimilates radioactivity on positive polarity. Thus, the repelling action is reduced and the particles hang closer to the surface instead of rising to be dispersed by the winds at higher altitude. Magnetism is the positive and negative fields generated by the revolving planet interrupting the positive and negative lines of primary energy present in all space. Electricity is the force generated by an armature interrupting the positive and negative lines of magnetism. Each has its effect on the other and can be converted into the other. The time field separates all primary polarities, all magnetic polarities, and all electrical polarities. This time field is unseen, infinite, and maintains the balance between the opposite charges present in all bodies. This balance is manifest in all new creation. With the continual testing of nuclear devices, the planet's unbalance will increase by the equal and opposite reaction of polarities coming ever closer to balance. This will bring about more ionization at the atmosphere, with an increase in smog, humidity, and clouds. Then the Bible prophecy will be fulfilled that said, The sun will no longer give forth her light. Verse In the pattern of my ways I live my life in many forms, known and unknown to other parts of me. I live in space of me to constantly supervise my doing. I live in soil to nourish my roots. I am the sap, the blood, and every density I am. I live my life and love it too. Being the loving love of you, thrilling where you express the me in thee. My life is sad only when you are mad at other parts of me. Only when you manifest hate to destroy. Then I wait patiently for you to recover, to discover that you have only injured me in thee. Your every fight is my fight too, but not when it is aimed at other beings of me. Your fight is to overcome the urge to purge yourself of war and woe. None can hold to me and proclaim victory over others of my parts of foe. I am here and there and everywhere. Justice is fair play with me, and mine is my eternity of now. 
The New Jerusalem referred to in the Bible in Revelation 21.10 is not really new. It is the positive polarity moon that has been orbiting around the earth for many thousands of years. This satellite, called Shanchia, by the space people as a spacecraft, their name for the earth is Shan. Chia means child in their language of the Solex Mal, or solar tongue. Therefore the name of this ship is Earth Child in English. This same craft was called the Star of Bethlehem over 1900 years ago at the birth of the child named Jesus. This positive polarity spaceship is square. This is not new information. It has been before our eyes hundreds of years in print, though it was not recognized. Revelation 21.16 tells you, And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth, and he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. The reason it was called the Star of Bethlehem was because when it is activated under control it looks like a star to physical vision. The last time its power units were activated was when the man Jesus was born. This positive star body generates a negative force field around it to protect it when it is in motion as a ship. Beth is used today as beta, meaning negative. Li, L-E, is used today as lia, L-E-A, meaning a meadow. Hem can be understood by any woman as the thing that goes around the bottom of a dress. Star of Beth Li Ham means a positive body with a negative force field around it, over a meadow. That is where Jesus was born, in a manger, in a meadow. Shanchia is orbiting around the earth in the earth positive forced field. It cannot be seen by telescopes because it sets up no resistance to the sun's positive rays. The Bible tells further in Revelation 21.11, Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious even like jasper stone, clear as a crystal. The seven lights are spoken of in Revelation 1.20, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, positive polarity, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars of the angels, space people of the seven churches, seven levels of life around the earth, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. The population of this level of life on earth is composed of people from the other six levels. Chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation tells which of the levels you are from. One of these seven church descriptions fits every mortal in this level. The population of Shanchia is given by Revelations 5.11, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. Verse, I am the voice, O mortal man, that whispers in the silence of your being. I am the motion instilled within the fluid dust of the body to encase you in this density of three. I am the softness that all babes know when nestled to the breast of me. I am the hardness of the substance many times beyond the density that mortals know. I am the sun that warms the morn and scorches bro, for you must know within the being of me is thee. And search, though you do not for eons yet to come, I am not there where you may go. I am within you, giving life to the clay, that my motion may be manifest for purposes misunderstood by man. I am not the formula of many, nor of one. My combination varies with each speck of dust, with each drop of rain, with each thought, each individual pain and hope. For I am always surrounding thee, and thee and me, but makes the journey short." Look not afar, look where you are, eternity is now. O oh man, you need not chart a roadway through the stars to me. You need not cross the land or search beyond the sea. You will find me in the smile and the look of someone you have helped along the way. You have only to search your heart and start to find that I am there, wherever you may be. Though all the roads may lead to me, Though my search eternally to find a shortcut in the way, I am there and here as close to you to me. So reach not for a star afar, search not in the distance in the future or the past. At least you are aware that I am there within your being, watching how you treat the me and others of my parts. Chapter 8. Methuselah's Toy The Great Pyramid, P-Y-R, means fire. Mid, the equal distance between the extremes, Pyramid, fire or positive light substance in the middle of Giza, Egypt, is the only existent structure on the earth that remains intact after 25,816 years. It is the greatest power plant ever built on this planet. 
At the time of its use, it could furnish more power than the generation of Niagara Falls could produce in a thousand years. The Great Pyramid was never intended to be a tomb or a monument for the pharaohs. Neither was it built by the Egyptian or Sykos, as assumed by historians. It was erected by the remnant of the Adamic race on this planet. In order to produce the power required, the pyramid was built in minute conformity to the measurements of our solar system. All dimensions were accurately computed to ensure correct functional operation. The pyramid was designed by Enoch and built by Tathma, who with the help of the true descendants of the Adamic race, the space people, who had made a forced landing on Earth, knowing universal laws and their application, they received timely warning and journeyed to Egypt before the sinking of the great continent Atlantis. Enoch and Tothma flying in an aircraft called Velix. After landing in Egypt 25,825 years ago, they started the operation and spent the next nine years in building the Great Pyramid. Utilizing knowledge gleaned from their secret records, they employed the infinite light power. They knew how to manipulate the light lines of force to cut the blocks with light energy from the A positive and B negative lines of force. They transported the heavy blocks with their volux. Hovering over each block, they encompassed it in their force field, eliminating the weight of the block in relation to the Earth. The blocks shaped so as to assure astronomical precision correspond to and contain all pertinent data of our Earth and solar system. These correct dimensions were necessary in creating a positive solar vortex on a small scale from the A positive and B negative lines of light force. The Great Pyramid was erected at its present location for several reasons. Its location was on the side of the negative polarity from the equator. The 30 degree latitude was the maximum vortex belt of both sides of the equator. It was lateral through the Earth to the positive pole of the planet's core. It was centrally located on the Earth's land mass, which was its nearest maximum point of negative polarity. It was opposite to the Earth's largest mass of water, which served as a reflector. The weight of the pyramid had to be tremendous in order to prevent its twisting out of shape or rotating on its base. The controversial capstone and a few courses of block were left off intentionally as experiments proved they were not needed. As the earth rotated, each revolution brought the pyramid into a cycle of A positive and B negative lines of force. This caused an increase in the vortex shaft of positive force, the principle of the cyclotron. Thus, after a period of days, the vortex reached and held its maximum force. All this planning and work, astronomy, mathematics, and engineering, was recorded symbolically in the stones as the work progressed. Jesus knew this by intuition and journeyed to Egypt to refresh his memory from the stone records erected by his people. In building this power plant of astounding dimensions, their chief concern was a safe return to their own people. Being endowed with true perception, they visioned the coming cataclysm of the planet and planned on Exodus. When the time of the departure arrived, they entered the king's chamber into the pyramid and charged themselves in the super light force vortex. Then they boarded their ships, hovering for a while over the truncated top of the pyramid in the positive shaft of force which extended beyond the gravity range of the planet. When the ships were properly charged, they were actually repelled from the planet and navigated with super speed to their destination. Some of the sons of God, the Adamic race who remained on this planet, knew of and used the stored up power of the pyramid for several thousand years. For instance, Methuselah and his sons prolonged their lifespan for hundreds of years by charging their bodies in the vortex. Many of the deceased pharaohs placed in the open tomb of the king's chambers for regeneration were restored to life. Those who did not revive were left there for a period of 28 days during which time the mummification took place. However, as the earth moved in the procession of the equinox, the regenerative and rejuvenating powers embodied in the pyramid were lost. Rulers around the earth, knowing of the rejuvenating power of the pyramid, tried to duplicate the great pyramid of Giza by building a pyramid of their own by manual labor in order to live longer themselves. They did not fully know the principles of primary energy, however, so their pyramids became their tombs. Nevertheless, the secrets are not completely lost. Humans, knowing they are alive now and not knowing what lies beyond the transition called death, attempt by every means possible to keep their physical bodies alive. The inner mind keeps transmitting the faint hope to their understanding that they can live forever. Naturally, knowing that they possess a physical vehicle now, they are reluctant to part with the old model to which they have become accustomed. 
Monkey glands, hormones, operations, injections have been advanced by the technicians in biological and medical science to try and prolong the life of the physical body. People assume that substance of a physical or chemical nature can support substance of like physical nature. This is based on the theory that if you keep adding dirt to a hill that erosion is constantly dispersing, it will always be a hill. Nature always wins the battle in the long run because natural forces are eternal. Man's efforts to overcome nature by opposing it will lose every time. The only means by which man can add years to the physical form is by going with the natural eternal forces. Life is eternally continuous. Humans have placed the limits of was, are, and will be on life. These divisions of time are from the physical brain. The flesh we call the brain only understands now. It only exists in the physical body for now. It cannot understand anything beyond its own limits of birth and death. All physical substance changes in time. It is understandable when one has spent his years in building up association, friends, family, why he wishes to remain here longer. His brain concept of the physical body does not want to give up its encasing form. The biggest trouble on this planet is that when you get smart enough to do something with the knowledge you have acquired here, death intervenes. Our lifespan is just too short. In Genesis chapter 5, it tells of Seth, Enos, Jared, Methuselah, and others living for hundreds of years. They were so close to the knowledge of their ancestors of the Adamic colony on earth that they used their fountain of youth principle to add to their lifespan. Rejuvenation is done with the infinite light, or what is called God power. In the application of this power, the one receiving it does not see, feel, taste, smell, or hear anything. I have the information to make rejuvenation possible, adding 50 to 80 years onto the average lifespan, plus resumption of youthful virility. The only difficulty I will have is that we are on the planet that is revolving. In order to operate this apparatus, I must clock it to the Earth's rotation, quite like a large telescope is clocked to keep it centered on an object being viewed. Verse O mortal beings, though many may express belief in the teachers I have sent, I accept them, providing that the expressions of belief is not a living lie. And those who live my laws and say, There is no God above, them I accept also. Though words may deny my person, the actions prove me in the heart. Belief expressed in words is not verified in fact, unless the living brings about the proof. Though multitudes have closed the door that keeps me from being the directing force, I condemn them not. Though laws may make my being infinite and boundless beyond comprehension, I am not there in the individual except, except as I am expressed in action. O mortals bound in density, look to the examples I have placed around you. Bow not your head to come to me, only prepare that I may be recognized within your being. Stumble not on barriers that mortal eyes fail to see. Build the perception within that which may guide your path that I may light the way so none shall stumble in progress of eternity. Lean not upon the cane of chance, but only cast a glance in my direction, which is within, to find the way by day or night. I make the path, I light the light. I lead you by the hand, and yet you trust me not, although you profess my being in words. The cycle has come in the circulation of my doing, and now I lead my faithful ones to victory over self. For they shall recognize my image is the light of sight, the light of right, instilled within each of my parts. And though I shake the ashes of my universe, the furnaces of my heat shall ever be, the love of me expressed in thee. Chapter 9. The Sword of Damocles I have explained that nearly everyone on this old earth has more or less dormant potential to communicate by thought. Like learning to play the piano or learning to become a master of any trade, sport, or any activity, the use of thought communication can only be accomplished by regular, continuous practice. The space people use instruments in their thought contacts with people only to ensure positive reception and to maintain power through conditions that could otherwise interrupt the reception. They think into a device they call an adiphone. This receiver is turned transmits through a projector they call an omnibeam. The omnibeam can be focused on any individual or group of people. This projecting of thoughts is mentioned throughout the Bible. Voices coming from heavens, the Lord speaking unto Moses and many others, including the voice of God coming to Jesus. The space people have explained that they can only focus this beam safely on people who have devoted much time to an awareness of open perception. Otherwise, the beam can be dangerous to the physical health of anyone that cannot stand its powerful vibratory transmission. 
One person has the power of one and can normally only contact one other individual. Here on the earth, one power of thought is sufficient in the earth magnetic field to contact any one other individual who is receptive at the time anywhere on the earth's surface. Thought projection by one person must be done by concentrating upon the individual you wish to receive your thought. Thinking his name and what he looks like must be pictured in the projector's mind several times. Then the thought you wish to transmit must be concentrated upon several times. This is for beginners. After one becomes adept at projection, only one thought, person, picture in the projector's mind will be necessary. The thought will not be projected to the one of whom you are thinking until you release the thought. In other words, after the concentration you must immediately forget what you are projecting and think on anything else. As long as you hold the thought in your mind, it will not reach the one you are projecting it to. Unless the person you are projecting it to is in a receptive state, he may not receive the thought. To be receptive, you must make your mind a blank. Do not think of anything while trying to receive the thought of others. With continuous practice, your projective and receptive ability will become apparent to you. The power of thought can be increased by the increase in the number of people. One person has one power. Two people have eight power. Three people have 512 power. This power cubes is resultant to the maximum of 12 people. This is the formula Jesus gave to the people when the creative spirit spoke through him, saying, When two or more are gathered in my name, there am I also. There is the force that the supreme intelligence used to think the universe into being. Nothing can be manifested without first being thought of by someone. As I have said, three people have the projective force of 512 power. Four people increase it to 134,217,728 power. When 12 people combine their thought force in unity on any purpose, that purpose would be accomplished. That is the reason Jesus did not select his disciples from among the intellectual of his day. He would have had too many fixed ideas to undo in their minds. Instead, he picked common people from among the multitudes, only one of which would even write. He knew that it would be easier to use the power of twelve simple-minded people than to undo the dogma, custom, and religious illusion established in the minds of the learned. Most of the acts Jesus performed were done through the concentrated power of his twelve disciples, with Jesus controlling this tremendous power. These acts have been turned miracles by people who didn't understand them. There are no miracles. Everything comes about by the natural laws of cause and effect. Thought is the causal force of all effects. Thought is of a positive polarity predominance as it is a causal or projective force. In the physical level of negative polarity predominance, thought cannot manifest by itself. Polarity requires that two poles be active to manifest a result. A battery with only a positive pole will not produce current. Duality is required in equal and opposite forces in order to manifest action as the resultant. Motion can only be when unbalance exists. That which is in balance cannot move of itself. Some other force must cause the action. This is why the expression of God helps those who help themselves is a universal law. The Bible tells you that God rested on the seventh day. Nowhere does it tell you that God started creating again. It says that God completed his works. This means that God is still resting and can only be manifested through man who was given dominion over all things. This in itself is proof of reincarnation. God made the race of man and then rested. Everyone of the race of man was created simultaneously. No one is older or younger than another. When God rested, creation was terminated by God. Birth of babies on the earth is only the repetition of their eternal creation here or somewhere else in the universe before. Death is only the departure from negative polarity manifestation to positive polarity manifestation. Life is only manifested through the interchange of motion through the unbalanced opposites. God is no thing. If God were a thing, God would have individuality and could not be infinite. For individuality is only a part of everything. God is referred to as He, the Father, etc. by the Church. This nullifies God's infinity and gives male gender to God. This excludes everything feminine and of a negative polarity. The Church would have God in the image of man rather than man in the image of God. To use God power, you must bring it out of stillness and manifest it through expression or motion to produce a given result. In giving man dominion over all things except his fellow man, God expected you to use the infinite intelligence of universal being to manifest results. 
Why did Jesus say he came to bring the word? He could have easily communicated with anyone he wanted to by thought, but he said he came to bring the word. The reason was that he knew the power of God, or rest, could only be manifested in a predominantly negative polarity level of life by an equal interchange of thought, positive polarity and expression negative polarity. It is not my intention to prove this formally to you, but rather to let your reason and experience prove it to yourself. Look back through your experiences and recall if the following has happened to you before. Apply it now and make it work for you. God's power has no limits except those that man creates. Think regularly every night between 6 p.m. and midnight of something you need. This is projecting positive thought by concentration into the negative polarity receptive lines of force, which alone are active in this quarter of the 24-hour rotation of the earth. Then during the time from 6 a.m. to noon, which is the positive quarter relative to the projection polarity lines on earth, express in words that you do not want the things you thought about during the 6 p.m. to midnight quarter. By attraction, positive thought to negative force and negative expression, the word, to positive force, you can receive that which you have put the forces of the universe in motion for. This should be done regularly, night and morning, for a 28 consecutive days, one magnetic month, and then release it by forgetting entirely about it. This can be used for others, especially if you do not tell them what you are doing for them. Telling them will bring their mind action into play and will interfere with the results. Once this formula is applied exactly as given, nothing in the universe can prevent the results from manifestation. You must think what you need or others need and use the word or the power of opposite polarity and patiently wait for the result after forgetting about it or releasing it into God's hands. The Creator caused the universe to be. Then all was given under the dominion of man throughout the universe. Man, using the force of thought, can create new things for progression or create new things for destruction. Thought is the prime force and it is neutral. Words are the effects of thoughts. Whether they be good or bad, words are in the range of our physical hearing. They are the means by which thoughts are conveyed between people with sound. Various languages convey the same meaning by different sounds. There have been many arguments, discussion, and efforts to prove that things and people not seen in our life level can be materialized. The the Bible tells many times about angels appearing before people apparently out of thin air. To believe in the Bible of Christianity with the concept that angels appeared in olden time and cannot appear in our time is certainly bullheaded orthodox. This is primarily done by some Christians who do not want angels to interfere with their selfish ways and pleasures. Much has been said about the space people of today materializing and dematerializing on several occasions. I can truthfully say that I have seen and talked with one of them that instantly disappeared in my vision, but I could still feel him when I touched where I had just seen him. Just as orthodoxy places limits on people's thinking, so does your physical sense of sight place limits on your seeing. Your eyes can only see within the range of the visible spectrum, about 4,000 to 7,800 angstroms in wavelength measurement. You cannot see the air, yet you breathe it. You can see water in its fluid density and its vaporous density, but when the steam is absorbed in the air, you cannot see it. Vibrations from about 20 to nearly 20,000 cycles a second can be heard with ears. Vibrations below our hearing level are called infrasonic and those above it ultrasonic. Because the five lower senses all have limits, people's thinking have become narrowed into a groove that will not allow them to accept anything that is not within these limitations. Many of the space people live in frequencies of life beyond the human limits. By using methods developed by them, they can bring their body vibrations inside our visual limits as easily as we can condense unseen moisture out of the air into water and then freeze it into ice. Many spiritualist mediums can materialize people from beyond the door of death. Do not let yourself be confused, however, with these ectoplasmic figures or the words spoken through them. All figures of people generated through the ectoplasm of another person are from the transition or earthbound level or are created from the mind of the medium. This is not to be scoffed at as the power to create from the mind is a great one indeed. None of the space people from other levels of life are ever materialized through a medium. It is not possible to bring through ectoplasmic means anyone from beyond the earth's force field. In order to progress to the finer frequencies of life and other levels, you must first know where you stand in this level. 
The creative spirit so designed his light universe that nothing can exceed its individual vibratory qualifications. Your individual record is being made daily by the way you live. Everything you think, say, or do is recorded in your aura. In the, fo in the life following this one, you will only be able to progress to the highest level in which your light record will vibrate. No one is going to judge you but yourself, and you will be faced with the result of the record you established here. You must conform in the way you live to the laws of the universe. The densities are established by different vibratory frequencies of light. You can qualify to jump grades by the way you live here now. Verse I am the voice, O man, speaking in the stillness of your being. The righteous recognize my voice. My call is to those whose ears are deaf to my withinness. I plead eternally that all may hear the me in you eventually. In the pattern of my doing I bring you pain and joy, that you may feel me in the contrast of your senses. Never shall I cease to call to those who live in darkness. Though my patience is infinite, I suffer because of your sin. When you hear me in another listen, do not shy from me in the disguise of a raucous laughter. The ones who live in the clamor of confusion, to hide from me are only adding sorrow to tomorrow. So I make each tomorrow a today that your memory of yesterday shall make my voice the louder from out of the silence of an added day you spent alone. I have extended a light to manifest my creations from thought of me and perpetuated motion through eternity, each motion to bring an effect and every effect a cause by repetition in an endless pattern of my doing. I ended my work of bringing about and made the O man to carry continuity. My infinite watching is directed to you, my image of instrumentality, which is thee, O man. Whenever you sing, my heart sings too, through joy of your emotion. And when you assist another, the act of thee is devotion to me and from me through thee. Whenever you sorrow, I am sad too. Each thrill you feel is transmitted to me. I too am ignored when you fail to see the me and others around you. Though you are in effect of my cause, O oh man, intelligent image of me, I only exist as effect of you whenever you cause me to be an extension through thee. Then am I active, then do I live, when you give effect to my cause in the love of me, through each day of my days, eternally. Chapter 10. The False Chariot You must understand the substance you call your body is very much like the body of an automobile. The chassis of which the substance forms is the eternal part of you. You can lose a limb or smash the body and the chassis of your reality continues on. In physical level requirements, your material body is of an animal structure following the form of eternal man in the essence of your real self. This material structure is given life by the fact that the forms of crystals within the bloodstream are the powerhouse of your every motion. These microscopic crystals in the blood diffuse, refract, and reflect the positive and negative lights passing through you continuously. These crystals often become neutral. They lose their power like a magnet. Each of these crystals is polarized and carries polarity and opposition. This brings about the flow of your blood through light energy. Many times as these crystals neutralize, they will settle in the feet. This is the reason for the ancient teachings concerning the posit position of standing on the head to circulate these crystals that have become neutral. The heart is caused to function by the circulation of the blood instead of vice versa. The heart serves only as a valve to keep the circulation going in one direction. The structure of the arteries is such that the cellular and atomic composition brings about a positive force upon the crystals in the bloodstream. The veins are such that negative force of light energy functions through them. Being of animal structure, man in the physical body requires crystals of an animal nature. Various refractory crystals found in animal foods are not reproduced by vegetation. The history of the mechanics of motion throughout the universe is locked in crystals. The records of all of that is as it was and ever shall be are concealed in the frequencies of various elements, known and unknown in their crystal perfection. Life is only given motion through various particles of matter in many forms. As the Bible tells you, the blood is the life. It transmits and circulates light energy into substance form of animal nature, which conforms to the pattern of man's real form. The flesh fills the real body, although the real body extends beyond the skin boundaries of the physical. As you are born in this form, call the physical body. Your instant beginning in this level was brought here in the seed, or the control master cell through the infinite G-line of light force. 
This control master cell was the beginning of your physical body. Under the functions of the control master cell, there are many other master cells. These master cells compose each one a center, the beginning of your vital organs and glands. The brain is a gland. The control master cell is the essence of form. It is subject to absorption and characteristic from both the male and female parents. The consciousness of being is the center of the control master cell, maintaining the records of all previous lives and experience in other levels. As these cells grow, bringing from the seed the form, controlled by the absorption of the control master cell, each child is endowed with good and bad traits of both parents. The seed which came over the infinite line of force contained none of the parents' characteristics. As this control master cell gives instruction, each master cell comes to attention in the proper position in the body, like a well-regimented army, all officers. Each of these office master cells gather recruits from the atomic substance in the A and B lines of force and develops each their own individual portion of the physical body. This continues until so-called death on this level. Roughly every seven years, these master cells' intelligence, centering the organs and glands, are relieved by other officers. Roughly every 28 years, the control master cell is relieved by another, better qualified and more mature lines. The secret of long life is in the ability, through consciousness, to control the change of these control master cells. Some people have assumed that the mind of individuals is in the head because through progressive conditioning they have been led to believe that the brain is the control of the mind. The mind is infinite and universal. The mind is not confined within the body. In observing with the third eye or the consciousness of your positive polarity vision, do not assume that the ability of this particular awareness is located anywhere within the physical body. Those whose concept of this vision is from the pineal gland area will naturally seem to focus in that area. Actually, your consciousness of individual being is all over your body, and in any particular experience is concentrated at the point of greatest sensation. If you smash a toe and the toe hurts, that is the point of which your greatest concentration of consciousness is recorded. The consciousness of your individual being moves with your emotions. It flares with various ones of these emotions and proceeds with, and recedes with others. Mind being universal is all through you and you are in it. Your consciousness is the doorway to universal mind. The scope of your consciousness can be increased with practice. Because you observe ahead of you with your negative polarity physical vision, you assume to look ahead of you with your inner vision. This is limiting your scope. A particular time to practice the expansion of your conscious awareness is when you retire at night. When you close your eyes, do not attempt to concentrate a light or your positive vision at the center of your forehead. Attempt to penetrate into the blackness, into the depth, with your projective inner vision. Look into the darkness, focus deeply and further away. It is possible with practice to focus your inner vision as you do your physical vision. Attempt to extend your inner vision. Penetrate further and further each night into the darkness. If you are outside observing the stars, try to look beyond the stars. In the spaces between them, attempt to see another star where none can be seen with your limited physical vision. This practice with the physical vision will also expand the inner vision. With constant and regular practice, you should be able, within a six-month period, to throw the limits of your forward vision out. You should expand your inner vision to cover 360 degrees and see as well behind as ahead or to either side. The limits of your forward physical vision are not applicable to the inner vision. The nightly practice will reveal to you that many things are within the scope of your inner vision, and your mind concept enlarges. Your consciousness penetrates with your attempt to extend your inner vision, and you grasp more of what the mind is. What is life? What is light? What is God? Where is heaven? These and many other questions are asked by numerous people daily. Wherever there is life, there is light and wherever there is light, there is God. Orthodoxy preaches that God is a male gender, saying he or him. This implication gives to the Creator sex. The single one is an iti, composed of uncountable entities. The Creator is a power of infinite, boundless eternity. Wherever life manifests motion, there is soul and polarity opposition. Wherever life manifestation, motion, and consciousness, there is spirit intelligent, present as a part of the creative mind. Dimensionless aspects of individual and density leads to spiral inclinations of finer levels of life. 
you are all sitting in God, breathing God in, and he is manifesting life in physical form through his right hand of positive polarity and his left hand of negative polarity. In between the uncountable billions of lines of light energy passing through you, there scientifically is God, insulating the oppositely polarized light energies from each other. Centering your consciousness individually, there is the staff of light and life eternal. Though God is still, the opposite light energies are in motion. When you move any muscle, light energy is the motive power. Light energy functions through the spirit. The single one is universal spirit, unseen, potent, supreme intelligence, composed of innumerable individual minds. When you record through any sense of smell, touch, taste, sight, hearing, thought, or being, it is the spirit of you that records the action. The substance of flesh is inert to sensing. The conscious mind of God is yours to use, like a universal library, but each must enter through his individual door to read the records. Mundane philosophies, scientific theories, or religious beliefs do not serve as keys to enter God's house. You each must individually open your own door, and when you do, you will discover first that you were inside all the time, but you are not aware of it. Few people who attend church understand the beginning of the church. The church building today is our pattern after an ancient worship. Men and women originally assumed they had reached a state of being part of God in the ultimate in the physical body. When the woman gave birth to a child, the man and the woman considered they had performed a creative act. This is the primary urge of all creation, to recreate. The understanding of what people was, the two things entered into the act of recreation. The male and female were essential to birth. In the time of the ancients, religious worship was conducted in the open. The ancient rites were conducted where a large rock pointed heavenward, symbolizing the projective male, and where another rock presented a cleavage representing a female. These phallic rites were conducted in reverence, although modern history would lead us to believe that they were sex orgies. The rites were worshipped in the most sincere form. The church buildings today still present the spire to heaven as a symbol of the projective male. The double open doors will represent the cleavage, the receptive opening of the female. Modern society does not understand sex and its relation to religion. They cannot be separated. The act of bringing a child to birth is not the part of the parent's choice. It is a choice of the child that brings it to birth through the parents. Although many would try to prevent having children, those who are qualified will have children in spite of themselves. Throughout history, sex has been mentioned more than any other subject. The Bible is full of it. Everyone wants to be in on the act because it is a natural, conductive method of recreation. Naturally, when any predominant thought is brought forth, there is always opposition. Those who oppose the recreative act choose to isolate themselves and become aesthetics. This is their choice because primarily they do not feel responsible for bringing new life from the old. Many of these so-called masters that have isolated themselves from society are fakes. They are escapists. They are looking for a way out of the responsibility of life. They have no reverence toward anything, although they would present a front to make others believe that they are sacred people. Throughout the universe, birth is a privilege of parents. It is the proof manifest that they are qualified to recreate with the Creator. Recreation is the essential progression of creation. Science is the art of measuring the ever-changing progression. The science converted to the destruction of today will only result in a disaster that will be a lesson for the future. Verse O mortals cast in destiny of form, I center the light to guide your way. My light is not seen by those who observe only the density of figure. Neither can I violate the laws I have made in the wisdom of my eternal ways. I cannot but stay at rest with you hoping that the best will reach for me, that I may bring your perception into the light. Man closes doors, man hides himself, he binds himself to possessions of dust, not realizing all is lost to him and lost to me. For only by the progression of thee do I progress. My parts are scattered throughout my boundless being, I move in many ways to fashion my completeness. Each part shall find the resurrection in me, though the time is recorded in the records lost in space. My eternity is only complete in the patience of myself and thee. And so I wait within, with the knowing that my beginning never end. O man, in the overcharging pattern of my thoughts I bring my creatures into being. In seeing motion all about, never doubt that I am there. 
for I am motion, change in time, so that my rhyme of repetition may cycle all my parts. Your eyes reach out to see the stars, not realizing each has stars within. Though sin may barricade your way to me, change will be your sword to rend the veil, and I shall hail you in your victory over self. Though my time is not to me, time to you is meant to be a gauge to register progression in my ways. Motion is the me and thee, O oh man, to manifest a change, so that in time you may escape the rhyme of rebirth repetition and be timelessly the peaceful thought of me eternally. End of chapter, end of book. This audio presentation of the Council of Seven Lights by George W. Van Tassel has been brought to you by AudioEnlightenment.com, copyright 2014, all rights reserved.